if everybody knows about this journal tab in Roll20, which is the third tab on the right. Yeah. And it's got there some handouts um, as well as the monsters that you've seen so far. Um, I put up there a, a map of Port Gawlach so you can, oh, you thank can you. see. It's not um, as good. I've got, if anytime you guys want to, just tell me and I can move you, you know, on the big screen to the map where I have the different locations that you've discovered so far. Um, for example, let me just do that now so you can see. Uh, this is really easy. So here. So this one will show you, and as you discover more places, more more tokens and icons will, will pop up. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to quickly look at the general map, you can just go to the, this journal setting and look at the map. Um, I also put up there the notes from uh, that I emailed around last time, which I've updated um, based on the discussion, which were really helpful. Thank you guys for your input. Um, and then this list of noticeable persons and places, I think I made it so you guys can edit that. And if you want to, you're welcome to use that as a place to keep notes or Keep your own notes. It's, just, it's oh. up to you, but it's there if you want to do that. And I guess that's it. So as as we go on, I'll I'll, I'll put more stuff in the handout section. So just check it once in a while, and you'll see um, what's there. Good job, Richard. Cool. I'm glad you like that. Um, all right, let me move you back to the nymph, which is you. Um, I. I, I, the um, other thing I was going to ask you guys about was um, entering in your hit points in your in the circle slots above your tokens. Sure. The problem with that, uh, uh, and maybe there's a workaround that somebody knows. Um, every time we switch maps, basically I have to reload your tokens on the new map, and that seems to clear those numbers. I think. Yeah, I think it there does. is no way to keep it. So it's kind of going to be you know exciting for everybody. So. If um if you guys don't want to do that, uh, you know it's really up to you. It's it's a little bit helpful for me just so I can look and see if somebody's on that store. But um, you know I will do it. Yeah, I'll do that as well. I don't mind really. If you're able to, I also it. put the the green bar. It's, it's really nice. Okay. Which green bar? Yeah, if you click in your token. Yes. Go to the settings of it. There is a, a heart. Then it's written bar one. If you, for example, there write 21, then 21, and save it, your character will show a green bar, like a video game, uh, with your HP. You have to just like bar from the pull down menu too, I think. Oh, no, I do. I see. It's very nice because the GM can visualize them all without clicking on your token. Yeah, hold on. As hold players, yeah. Settings, okay. So I have the a... icon setting, and yes. the, under the name, yes, there is bar one. Ah, uh, correct. Yes. Yeah. I see. I see. So I can put something like uh, that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it's really nice. The nice thing is, like, if you put the, for example, three HP out of twenty, the bar yeah. will show red. Oh, so okay. Really nice. Yeah. If you want, again, it's really it, it's it's okay, but you can put like in the in the blue one, you can put your armor class without without anything on the right, only on the left, and that'll show your armor class. There's only there's only four of you guys. I I can keep track, and I've got written on the side, so don't worry about it so much. But if you could keep track of the hit points there, it actually would help a little bit. Thunder. Okay, Thunder. armor class. Okay, okay. And uh, in the red one, what do you put? Up to you. It's sort of an and it's an extra one. Um, sometimes people put arrows if you've got or expendables there. Sometimes you put perception. Or like how yeah, high up the air you are. I usually put it like <laughs> if you have like an area combat. Yeah. Something. Or you can put your magic pool if you play at Shadowrun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, the main things are hit points. Um, okay. Cool. That's um. That's ever housekeeping. Uh, does somebody want to do a recap? Well, I think there is not much to say other than we arrived to the new continent and we found a wrecked ship. We decided to check it and it seems it was one of the ships of the company that hired us. Um, we check it inside 
and we were surrounded by monsters. Monsters that looked, some of them looked like they were once humans mutated to fish-like creatures, while others looked like, looked like real fish monsters. We got our way out of the ship and we escaped it. Then we reached the, we just reached the harbor. It seems the city is not in danger. I was expecting like <laughs> monsters here too. And now we, we just reached the, the tavern to just restore ourselves. We had a talk with the, I guess I, if I remember well, we had a talk, talk with the harbor master and yeah, I might, I might, I may have forgot some details. I think those are the, the main things. Um, uh, to remind you, the Harvard master's name is Arakir. Um, he's a tiefling, and you did see um, a number of uh, what looked like they might have been townspeople, but they looked pretty ragtag and frightened, and they 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 stayed away from you. Um, mm -hmm. You only had a short walk from the where the ship is now docked to uh, the nymph's rescue. But that's it. Um, uh, you'll remember that Captain Glover, your captain, stayed behind with Arakir to deal with some technical stuff and paperwork. He sent you ahead to the Nymph's Rest, which is this inn uh, close by to the docks. And he, uh, five of his crew had jumped off the ship to go get supplies as soon as you guys docked. Um, and they're, they're somewhere about town, you would think. And this is where you are now. You're at the uh, front door of the, uh, the Nymph's Rest. Okay. So, who's buying? Okay, I step in. Go in let's go inside. Okay. Yes. Go ahead and move your, your character. Yeah. Huh? I said hello, everybody. <laughs> okay. You walk in the door, um, it is um, a fairly spacious area, um, well kept in, although um, it does look um, like it could use a very good cleaning, like it oh. is very, very, very used. Um, it's quite crowded. There is um, quite a number of uh, humans. Um, they, they look like sailors. You recognize um, five uh, from your crew, the ones that were supposed to go and get supplies. Um, they've all got mugs of ale in front of them. Um, those, are, those are all the ones that are there in green, uh, with green circles around them. They're all ones you recognize from the dawn cast. Um, and then they're, they're all, you know, talking with other, looks like other sailors and drinking and uh, that's it. The other sailors are the ones from your crew. Um, they're just off the boat. They look like they're, you know, relatively fresh, but they're they're, they're in deep conversation with these other sailors. The other sailors look very, very ragtag. Um, their, their clothing uh, is, is somewhat tattered, not, not filthy, but, but it's certainly seen better days. And um, nobody's really smiling much. They're all kind of just you know, drinking their drinks and talking in, in low voices. And uh, they all look up as you come in. I see. Uh, behind the bar, you see um, a, a large uh, uh, fear bulk and uh, very, very tall, sort of, um, I, I don't know, describe sort of like almost, um, I don't know if you guys know what fear bulk are, but they're kind of like giant like creatures, but sort of softer than a giant there. But they're about, this guy's about um, seven and a half feet tall. Okay. Very, very sort of uh, pudgy guy. He's busy behind the bar, um, pouring ale, and uh, appear, appears quite busy. But um, you know, back and forth between the sailors and uh, and the bar. Hmm. Okay. Um, since I'm not loitering, uh, I'm going to to. Is it the place you order at the table, or you order at the bar? Uh, you could try either way. So the tables, um, there's there's table space, you know, available just about anywhere. There's, a, there's an empty table um, closest to the door there to your right. Um, you could go to one of the tables. That yeah, has that's where I go. 
or you go up to the bar. That's where I go and I, I signal to uh, to a bartender that uh, okay. brings us some beers. What's, what are uh, Molly, uh, Eleanor, and Herbis doing? Molly is just waiting to see what the other guys do. You're waiting outside? No, I'm waiting to see what the other guys will do. Okay. Depends on them, basically. Okay. All right. I mean, I guess the inception. Uh, looks around. Uh, is there anybody looking like they would be keen for a chess match? <laughs> um, they're they're all around. I guess let's see. Um, you want to roll perception? You can see. What are you looking for? You're looking for somebody that looks like they're smarter than the average guy. Or... Well, <laughs> what, what well. I mean, do do they do gambling here at all? Like any of the tables look like they're playing cards or I don't know. They don't that you notice in front of you. Um, they look like they're more just just drinking. Some have, you know, plates of, of half-eaten food, um, but they're they're mostly just just sitting around talking. They're all um, looking. A, if you, when you notice them, you notice that they're all looking up at you at the group that's coming in, and they're also um, in three of the tables. Um, there's a, multiple sailors are sort of deep in conversation with um the members of your crew uh-huh cool uh i guess i give a, a big howdy and uh i think i just i just go slowly shuffle to this table because i i mean that's that, that's an open table i guess we can take it and sit down set my chest set in front of me and uh wait <laughs> Okay, okay. That's what I'm doing. Okay, what about uh, Eleanor? Well, um, I will go inside. Uh, by the way, uh, I was just listening to your uh, heated discussion earlier, so I didn't want to interrupt. So sorry, I was a little bit late first. No, no worries. I want to say that. And uh, anyways, I'm going to go inside. And uh, I, I would like to have a good look around to see somebody who looks like he is knowledgeable here than the others or basically somebody who looks more important than the others like lots of people sitting around uh, looking up to him or like you know a group leader or anything because as a sage i'm i'm always looking for information basically yep yep okay um well um so i think i understand what you mean you probably don't mean this but you do notice obviously the one person who sticks out is different than all the rest of the bartender um, who is obviously not a sailor. As far as the sailors go, um, nothing strikes you at the moment of somebody who's um, particularly important. You know that um, all the green sailors are from off of your ship and they're all basically deckhands. Um, they're, the, uh, the captain isn't there. Um, so yeah, nobody strikes you at, at this moment as being a particularly standout and uh, you know, that other people are being deferential to. Hmm, okay. So is there anybody who is like uh, sitting in a group where everybody's like, uh, you know, speaking to him with respect kind of thingy? Like looks not, like... Not, yeah, not, not, I know what you mean, not if that's your notice at this stage. Okay. So the green ones, I'm sorry, like the, you are separating them by colors. I didn't hear that part, I guess, if you said it. Yeah, like, so all the ones with the green circles, you recognize them from your ship. Um, they were all uh, on the Doncast, and you sailed with them uh, for three weeks. So you, so you all know them. You know, you don't necessarily know them, you know, like best buddies, but you know who they are, and you would probably know their name. Okay. So all the other colors are unknown yet, right? Correct. We don't know them. Correct. Yep. Okay. Fine. Um, then maybe I will go and speak to these two guys over here. Okay, you're going over there. And yeah. Molly? Regarding me, I once they are all inside, I actually move myself here. And I just sit here by myself. And I would like to just have a good look at the town and relax myself. Okay. Great. Okay. Um so right now you don't at this moment you don't see anybody else um around um but that could change 
Um, yeah, and, and I just want to see the sunlight, see the sky, see, you know, it's been a long time I have not been in a open place like this. So yeah. and, I and really want to enjoy it. For sure. And, and uh, definitely all of you guys are, are definitely feeling that after three weeks at sea, when, you, when you're finally now on dry land, it feels like the land is swaying underneath you. Um, huh. Like a ship, you're 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 still feeling almost as if you're at sea. So it's it is weird. It's a weird, weird feeling, but uh, it does feel good to be back on dry land. So yeah, time. Molly would be an emo, asocial one, <laughs> and sit there. Okay, look. Um, okay, uh, back to Elvin. What are you doing? Mm, I think. Um... Um, I probably, uh, while they were getting in and uh, whatever, I, I probably have ordered already a drink. Okay. So uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm taking my drink. Yeah. And I'm moving to one of the tables where I recognize uh, some of the crews. Okay. Uh, and I try to engage socially, like, uh, hi guys, how are you doing? And, and um, if, uh, if I see them a bit reluctant to. to to talk, then I will switch to uh, offering them a, a, a drink to, for the food table. Okay. The, um, so the uh, all of the green sailors uh, greet you and say, "Elvin, welcome." Yeah, we're uh, these are these are uh, some of the crew from from the other ships uh, that it sailed in from the uh, from the Kin Kincardine and from the uh, Urtica. Mm. Um, so we're we're just all catching up. Uh, you know, we haven't been here for many years, but we're, we know some of the sailors, and they, so they introduce you. So, oh, okay, so uh, so uh, I I said uh, you guys have all my respect uh, to the other sailors. I know how tough it is uh, from uh, what I've seen from the uh, the work of uh, the friend here at the table. Just trying to make them comfortable and uh, and, uh, and uh, approach uh, respectfully. Yep. Okay. Um, they seem to react to you uh, pretty well. Um, they're 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 definitely staring at you, but not necessarily, not not in a hostile way. You don't you don't get the feeling. More like they're just um, it's it's almost like a, a stare of someone who um, you know it's it's like almost like they're looking past you. It's like almost like they're having trouble focusing on you. They're just they're, 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 there's clearly stuff on their minds, um, and they're they go back into conversation um, with the other crew, and you you hear them basically just asking um, the other crew members for information, like um, you know when did you sail, um, what what you know what are you doing here, what what when are, when are you going back? Um, okay. Let's, let's see what so let me, let I, me, go ahead one more thing, and then I'll, then I'll turn it over yep, to you. Yep. So to I sense I sense this, um, and um, I use my. Um, Ranger ability uh, of uh, being uh, 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 how do you call that uh, uh, meddling? No, not meddling. Um, vanishing in the environment. Okay. You know, like uh, <laughs> yeah, like just absorbing what they're saying uh, and me uh, being uh, as uh, as invisible uh, as possible. Just uh, they don't pay attention to me. Uh, and I, I, I land here to what they're saying. Sure. So you're like just fit, you're blending in. Yes, like blending in. in. There you go. Got you. Okay. Um, cool. We'll come back to you. Um, moving over to Fervis. Um, you're at the chessboard. Uh, roll me a d6. A d6. Okay. I don't have a macro for that. <laughs> okay. uh, you should be able to describe the die. It's off okay. Here. Yeah. It's a free. Okay, one, two, three. This guy oh. comes over and says, "That looks like a dragon chess board, and you look like you're uh, needing for some some play." What do you say? Yes, uh, I've been I've been trying to invite someone. Uh, what's your name, good sir? Uh, my name is Jacob. My Jacob, is Jacob. Nice to meet you. My name is Dane. Let's have a great game then. What do you bet? I can start with uh, 10 silver, see how that does us. 
Works for me. All right. So I was looking a little bit about how to do a uh, chessboard, uh, a dragon chess competition. Ah. Tell me if you've got a better way to do this. The way that I read is um, is uh, competing intelligence checks um, for between three to five rounds, depending on the, the level of play. So maybe three rounds of, you know, best uh, two out of three in intelligence. Yeah. That's so, yeah. Sounds um, fair with, to me. With your, with your modifier, with your modifier, and uh, you, you, this dragon chest—that's part of your background, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you can roll. You can add your proficiency bonus to your intelligence check. Oh. Which is a whopping. Wait, is your intelligence or wisdom? I mean, I guess you know this is your thing, so I, I give you a choice: intelligence or wisdom. I mean, it really depends on what. I mean, I don't mind either. Uh, well, and if you're if one of those stats is like is super low, because it's sort of like your dumb stat, the the the, ch the dragon test is obviously your thing, so it wouldn't be whichever your dumb stat is. Uh, so you okay. take your higher stat, and uh, oh, okay, you're, cool, you're supposed cool, to be cool. good at this. This is your thing. It's supposed to be, yes. <laughs> it's supposed sure. To be. You're uh, going to well, then I have to change mm -hmm. this attribute wisdom. That's better. Okay, I think I can roll it like here. Can I? Ah, interesting. What does that do? Okay, I guess first round. Okay. So that included your. Um, yeah, that's uh, so I rolled a ten. Two is the proficiency modifier and plus three. Excellent. Okay, here we go. As a wisdom. Oh, you guys oh. had a challenge. I I see we have a challenge. <laughs> So maybe with this, the thing to do is to um, is to now disregard this one, and it's still going to be, I guess, two out of three. Ah, yeah. okay. So right. here, so we'll, here we'll it goes. We wait, wait, wait. We'll, we'll come back to you. Oh, we will come back. Okay. We're going to do the rounds. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. Next is um, Eleanor. So Eleanor, you walk over to this table, and you see two very disheveled. Um, sailors there, and they look drunk as, as they can be, and they're they're sort of look very very unfriendly. And they see you come over and say, "Oh, you! You think you'd come over here and sit with us? We don't know you. Get out of here!" Well, I'm just gonna pretend basically that I'm drunk, and I'm just gonna like say like, uh, mm, "Well, I." Wait, they are being unfriendly, right? Very yes. unfriendly. These Very unfriendly. Okay. Okay. Hi, guys. I just wanted to check up on you because you look really I super. Get out of here, you nobody. Again, before we do something about it. Ooh. Ooh. They are very, very unfriendly. Look at that. Okay, fine. Well, they're, you... they're very slurring their words when they talk. They don't. <laughs> they don't actually seem that threatening because they seem extremely drunk. But they're, mm. they're definitely seeming very, very unfriendly. Okay, would you be interested in uh, five gold coins then, or that doesn't interest you as well? Get lost, bud. Okay, I guess not even 10 coins are enough for you then. Okay. Feel free to leave your coin at the table and beat it. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm just going to forget about these guys and uh, move somewhere else. Okay. Where do you want to uh, go? I'm going to go down. Here. Okay. Um, so this table is much more friendly. They see you coming and they say, "Yeah, we we saw what happened up there at that other table. Don't don't mind those 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 bastards." And they, they speak in a low voice. They're off the arbite. That's that's Gage's crew. He's he's trouble. You, you don't want to mix with them. But anyway, we're glad to see you. Uh, when are you leaving? I'm glad to see you. I just arrived here, so I'm, I'm not sure I'm leaving anytime soon. Uh, which crew are you guys from? Um, and the uh, the guy at the head of the table there um, to your left um, says, uh, I'm off the Urtica. Um, well, um, I'm one of the few remaining off the Urtica. Um, my name is Dan. And uh, this guy, this other guy's over here, got to my right, and lady across the end of the table, they're off the, the Kincardine. Um, 
I've been here myself around eight weeks now. And you've been here how long did you say? And they, they respond back and I say, we've been here seven months. We're ready to go. Got to get your, your ship restocked and, and, and let's, let's get out of here. So I'm, I'm looking at the list of notable persons that you have made. So the other ship names, <clears throat> there is a King Cardine and there's a, which one's the other one? Uh, so the guy that was talking at the head of the table, he said he's from the Urtica. The Urtica, okay. And the other, the other one uh, to his directly below him and then uh, the woman at the down to the right, they're both off the King Cardine. And, and as you know, the green one there is off of your ship, Concast. Okay, and the so, ship they mentioned that the the other guys that were that were mean up at the top, they were off the Arbite. Okay, so the Arbite was like six months ago. This is the oldest one. Correct. And the King Cardine was five months ago. So it's like just one month between the two. And the Ortega was like two weeks ago. I don't know, two weeks before we moved, before we sailed. So it would be. Yeah. We spent the how three weeks at sea, I think. Yeah, I was I was just looking at my numbers and seeing if I got it wrong. So the, what they're telling you, um, and I'm pretty sure this math works out because I've checked it a few times. So they're saying that the the crew at, off the Kincardine, so that is the blue. They've been here for seven months. Okay, the blue is a Kincardine. Okay. And the ones off the yellow from the Urtica, they're saying they've been here for about eight weeks. Okay. Two months. So all the stuff news. Okay. So basically, okay, I, I would like to like I would just face uh, one of the blue crew members first from the King Cardia and ask them. So we didn't hear about you guys for a long time and you were presumed lost. So your ship was presumed lost, but does this mean that everybody is okay and you actually arrived here safely? Um, I'm speaking with this girl over. Okay, from the King Cardia. Um so they're saying, yeah, you know, we, 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 we're part of the, our, our vessel. We would regularly sail here to Port Gawatch, uh, you know, every one or two months. And uh, along with representatives from the Merchants Guild, we drop them off here. We'd usually stay here for a week, maybe a little bit less to, to restock. And uh, then we turn around and, and, and sail back with, with updates. Uh, we did this back and forth for 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 years, um, and uh, well, when we got here uh, about eight weeks ago, not long after that, um, while we were here at port, somebody came and uh, requisitioned our ship, S sailed it off. They did. They just took it off from you, and you didn't do anything about it. We were we were all ashore, and uh, we were we were told that the uh, the government here was requisitioning it, and we didn't have a choice. Our, our captain told us we didn't have a choice. Okay, fine. So well, your captain is not here at the moment, right? Captain, yeah, Captain Holt. No, um, he. We haven't seen him now, and. In uh, a couple months, at least, he um, he has a girl up at Mount Oresta, and uh, usually he goes up there. But usually, for not this long, we haven't we haven't seen him in some time. Uh, could be something happened to him. It's a little bit unusual, very unusual for him to be gone this long. But but then again, it's unusual for us not to have a ship too. Mm. He, he has a girl like uh, he, who came with him on the ship or like he met her in this island? No, no, no. It's, this is more than an island uh, there, son. Uh, this is a big, big continent. But uh, he uh, he knows her here. He's known her for quite some time. It's, it's his girl and she uh, she lives up in the mountains, not in Resta. So he met her after coming here, basically? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So hey, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to pause it there. Yeah. And okay. Move over to Molly. Um, yes. Molly, you're enjoying the sun. Um, it's setting. It's around 4:30 in the afternoon now, so it's 
it's uh, starting to, the sun's starting to see, sink down uh, below the palm trees uh, and the buildings. And it's, it's actually creating quite a nice glow, um, sunset orange red glow reflecting off the clouds above you. Um, you're feeling the heat of the day slowly fading and your, your muscles are relaxing. Um, and you see, give me a perception roll. Sure. Perception, there we are. Okay, that's good. Um, as you're sitting out there, and you're sitting out there about 15 minutes or so now, um, you see a, uh, uh, what looks like a, a family of, of locals. Um, it's a, uh, um, a mother, and a father, um, they, they're both um, uh, tieflings. And, uh, and uh, two young children, um, one is a boy, um, and he's using a crutch to walk. Um, and you notice that uh, he's actually missing a leg. And uh, they're, they're quite a distance off. Um, and they're just, they're just watching you sort of curiously, but warily. Well, at first, I watched them curiously too. But when I realized their eyes get, get in contact with mine, I changed my view, kind of shy away from them. OK, so you're sort of acting shy, kind of. Or you are yes. feeling shy. I am feeling shy, yeah. OK. So you still you don't, you don't really connect. Okay, um, but do you look at you keep an eye on, out of the corner of your eye, or you just sort of completely avert your? Yeah, eye? maybe, maybe, but I don't want them to catch me <laughs> doing so. Got so, it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I mean, you can tell they're still there and they're just watching, uh, um, but they're they're not coming closer either. They're sort of, you know, they're close to an edge of a building and they're. They're not hiding per se, but they're um, they're definitely keeping their distance um, and just watching curiously. They keep watching me. Yes. Well, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> this family is sort of scaring me. Uh, I just mind my business. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. You notice then that um. Uh. Furbolk um, comes out, the bartender, and he goes back into this room uh, mm -hmm. and out of sight. Well, he's probably taking some provisions. Ah. OK. Um, OK. We will go back to Elvin. Sure. Yes, I'm here. So uh, I suppose that uh, while I was blending him and uh, just trying to go along with the flow, uh, there were a few topics that um, that started to to emerge from the conversation. Uh -huh. Do you want to just hear sort of what the what the conversation was a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Um. So mostly, what the the sailors are are asking, they're sort of they're grilling. The, the crew off the Domcast, and they're asking, you know, um, they keep saying, you know, so when when are you going to resupply? When when do you set sail? Uh, we've, we've been here for for months. We're, we're, we're ready to go out. It's uh, things are getting bad here. It's it's really bad. The uh, the refugees they're they're starting to flood in now. A, a while ago, it wasn't like this. It was, you know, a few. There was there was a trickle of them, but in the past month or so more and more and more and they're in bad shape and the stories they tell it, it, it it'll turn your blood cold okay so i i i'm trying to to um to engage a bit of a conversation on on make them talk a bit and say something like oh my god what, what, what's happening it sounds horrible horrible this is uh one of the uh the uh, the woman who's right there next to you, horrible. You say, you are in a horrible. Almost my entire crew is lost. The uh, they say the refugees so, they tried to swarm our swarm our boat and they they sunk it. Uh, it, it, it 
You know, what are we going to do? We're, 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 we're now cast away here. Uh, I empathize with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and saying, ah, those uh, refugees, yeah, uh, can't they stay where they, where they are? What's, what's, what's wrong with them? The refugees, they're, I guess they're, you know, they're desperate. It doesn't give any excuse for what they've done, but uh, they're, 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 you know, a sad looking lot. Um, the ones we've seen, and we don't go out a whole lot. We, we tend to stick here is what we've been told is where we need to stay here at the Nymph, but Sometimes we get out around town a bit, and the ones I've seen anyway, they they look like in bad shape. Lots of injuries, not much to eat, it seems. They're a scrawny lot, even the big ones, even the centaurs, they're they're scrawny looking. Oh, scrawny nobody's looking. doing anything to help them? I don't know. You know, we, we try to we try to mind our own business here and not much for us to do, but wait, we were told that, that maybe there'd be more ships on the way and, and now you're here. So we, we, we figure we can leave soon, right? Oh, very likely, I hope so. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, actually, I, I want to know a bit more about the, the context of uh, but uh, why are there refugees in, in the first place? Uh, wh- what are they running from? Okay, so the um, the uh, one of the um, guys from the Kincardine, the, the old looking sailor down below you and to the right, speaks up and says, well, when we, uh, we first got here, you know, eight months ago now, I can't believe it's been that long, seven months ago, whatever it's been, uh, there were a few that, that were coming through here and, you know, we, we heard they, they were really heading towards the south from, from the north. There was some sort of problem up north causing, uh, causing people to come down through Port Gawatch on their way to the south. Um, I don't know, the past month, two months, something like that. There are more and more of them. And... Uh, like the last was saying, they're they're looking like they're in rough shape. Uh, but two months ago, when uh, when the Urtka came in with uh, with old Ofric, they uh, well they were here for just a short time. What was it, a week or so? And the woman says, "Yeah, it's only about a week because we were the second watch." He says, "Yeah, yeah, like a week or so," and. Uh, then, you know, we were, we were all here in our rooms at the Nymph and woke up in the middle of the night with shouting. There was shouting going on at the, at the docks. And we looked out the window and, and the, the, the sky was a, was a glow. It was a, there was a fire on the horizon. And we all went out to, uh, to see what we could do. But all the skips, they were gone. There was, there was nothing we could do. And oh. uh, from what we heard, all hands were lost, other than the uh, the few that you see here that were on shore leave. Oh, uh, you mean the, the ships were lost? The Urtica. It was lost, sunk? The Urtica, we understand, was sunk. That's what they told us. Not far off at, outside the harbor. Sunk and burned, they say. Our ship... And Kincardine and the Arbites ship, the crew of the losers over there, you see, uh, mm. our ships were, were sailed off. That was around five months ago. A bunch of tieflings came up and the, uh, the mayor of the parts, Silrius is his name, he told us that the council had said that they're going to take our ships and we were not to resist. There was nothing to be done. Before we knew it, our ships were sailed off. That was before the Urtica arrived. Oh my God. I'm gonna pause it there. Okay. And let's go to the chess match here at the other table. Uh, well, 
while we're playing the chess match, I do try to hit Jacob off with a convo as well. Like, you know, what crew? Uh, are you local or uh, are you with one of the ships? Local? Do I look like a centaur or a tiefling or a fearbolg? No, no, mate. I'm a, I'm a Fyrdica. I'm one of the survivor crews. Oh. Been here for uh, about eight weeks now. Already itching to get off. Not as bad as some of the others around here, perhaps, but I'm, I'm itching already. I don't want to end up like this lot stuck here for so long. Yeah, you're lucky to survive. What happened? Well, so we, you know, our mission was to uh, transport uh, this bigwig from the Merchant's Guild named by name of Francis Ofric. And it was our job just to get him here, and that was really it. Uh, so we got here, and the, uh, you know, going to do our reprovisioning like always. Uh, myself and, and my crewmates here, we were on first watch aboard the ship in the harbor. And uh, things seemed okay, but uh, Captain, he came up uh after about a week and said he was getting a little nervous about the safety of our ship and uh told us we should make pull anchor drop lines and make to the mouth of the harbor and drop anchor out there to be a little bit safer so we did that all of us and anchored out there and after a day or two things were pretty quiet captain gave us shore leave and us lot we came to uh we came to uh to shore and well we were just drinking here and very first night we woke up and all sorts of commotion and fire on the horizon and it 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 was bad feeling from the from the first moment we saw it but huh yeah the, uh, the urtica was lost that's the short of it yeah funny you should say that I mean... So to be honest with you, we we done we we did find what remained of the Urtica, and uh, it was strange. Like uh, it seemed like it's been burnt or something. It was you know, strange. I tell you, you know, what they say are the refugees um, were desperate to escape, and they swarmed the ship. Oh. And in the process, they took her down. But he sort of looks over to the uh, the guys at the two guys, drunk sailors at the table there, to to your left, to his right, uh -huh. and sort of leans over a little closer to you and says, "Have you seen these refugees? Do you think they could take a ship? Our, our guys, you know, they were fresh. We we know what we're doing. I I don't know." But what am I to say? We were told that it was the refugees, the ship went down, and it burned. Uh, I see. Well, that also explains the local races we found on the ship. Huh. Interesting. All right, your turn. Make your move. Alrighty, let's see what my luck. My uh... yeah, I'm gonna use my nine that I rolled earlier. Okay. Uh... Whoops, oh. sorry, ignore that. I forgot. Well, both of them are good. <laughs> uh, ignore that. I can't give the modifier and do it, so I was trying to open the window. There we go, 14. Okay. Ooh, nice move. Oh. Ah. You thought uh, you'd find uh, a challenge here. I guess you guess you found it. Well, okay. I'm sure you'll catch up. Yep. Okay. Right, it's back to... To uh, Eleanor, I think. Okay. So I continue talking with uh, Georg, the blue girl. And uh, she was talking about uh, her captain, Volt, who went uh, up north uh, with a girl in, who lives in the mountains. So I, I would like to ask the girl's name and uh, just to confirm, like the mountains are in the north where, uh, well, I don't know about the refugees yet, so I'm just going to ask, like, uh, the mountains are towards the north side, right? 
basically. Uh, yeah, and so um, let's say, uh, you know, we haven't been up there ourselves, uh, but, you know, there's, there's, there's villages not too far from here, and this particular one, well, it's a nymph village. Um, it's it's where the uh, the the, the, the uh, history of it, from what I hear, is that it used to be an old uh, guides town. The nymphs, you know, that, the, the name of this place, the nymphs rested. The nymphs used to be in the old days the the guides for uh, for visitors from from um, across the sea. Uh, in order to take them in country and to different parts of the continent, uh, the nymphs act, acted as guides, and this mountain town was one of their uh, starting off places. Um, so it's, I guess it's well known amongst the the natives. I've never been there. Um, Mount Aresta, it's called. Uh, the name of the uh, the captain's uh, girl is. Uh, Something like what is it? What is it? It's Akira, something like that. E Akira, something like that. I don't know. I can't pronounce the nymph names. Um, but he'd go up there every time we were in port. He'd uh, make sure the ship was okay, make sure she was she was safe, and uh, get the reprovisioning underway. And he'd take off and go head up to Mount Aresta for usually two three days and find his way back here before. Uh, before we shipped off again. Like clockwork it was, no, never any problem, but he's been gone for, for quite some time. Okay, so they, like, they at least, like, they know that the captain at least went north, basically, like, the way he left them, like, when he left, he just headed north, basically. So, Just... yeah, they, um, so they explained to you that they, um, they had heard that that's where he was heading, um, and it, it kind of made sense to them that that's where he'd, he'd be going. And it's uh, it's not that far to the north. Um, they don't know exactly how far, but they get the sense it's it's not that far because he would go each time they were in town and he'd only, he'd only be gone for two or three days each time typically. So it's not like it's far, far away. Yeah, like a few hours. For... Don't, you don't know exactly. And they don't know exactly. Yeah, 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 no yeah. one's ever been. But, you know, in other words, he could go and get back within two to three days. Okay. So uh, I, I turned back to the guy uh, I spoke to first uh, at the head of the table, uh -huh. and I asked, uh, what about your ship? What happened to it? Um, and so he basically gives you the same story that you, that you were hearing from, from the other uh, yeah, yeah. sailors off Erdica. Basically mm -hmm. the same. Pull um, him on this check. OK, so the, no, uh, no additional information. Just I was just checking in case. Give me a second. Let me just check here. Um, so he says, um, yeah, you know, it's pretty much like that. Um, the the damnedest thing were all the skiffs were gone. Um, they're all back. They were all back the next day. Um, the skiffs, you know, are. Uh, are you know small boats they're usually you know single masted small sailboats that'll fit like you know 10 people or so and it's for short coastal sailing um we could also refer to like larger rowboats things like that so small boats um and he says that there were there were the, the skips including the one off the urtica that they they used to shuttle back and forth they, they went immediately as soon as they saw the fire to try to get back to to the urtica to the Ur but they were all missing. They were all gone. And the next day they were there. And that Ofric, you know, he was, he, he, he showed up um, at the dock when, when we were all trying to figure out what to do. And uh, the look in that guy's eye, he, uh, he looked angry, angry as I don't know what, as a, as a shark for sure. And uh, he stormed off and uh, we haven't seen him since. That was uh, seven weeks ago now. So there, uh, so the skits disappeared or burned it? Skits, skits weren't burned because they got they were back the next day. Sure, sure, it just looked absolutely fine. No, not a flaw on them. Um, they're still out there now. You can go see the skits. Uh, they're all tied up at the docks. Okay, so the skits disappeared for one day and then came back. 
That's that's what it seemed like. And the exact time though, but something like that. And uh, while the skits disappeared, the ship burned. And well, I assume I know the ship was. We went out. We woke up in the middle of the night. It was dead middle of the night. Uh, and uh, when we tried to get out to the ship, of course, we needed a skiff to get out there, and they were all gone at that time. The next day, at some point, I can't tell you exactly when they they were back. Somebody noticed and said something. I see. Okay. Okay. So, and you haven't seen off like uh, since then, right? You just went off somewhere and don't even he didn't even tell you like which way he's going or something. Not when I saw him. I wasn't going to go and talk to the man. He, he was never uh, all that close to the crew, but he looked madder in hell and he just stormed off. And no, haven't seen him in you know the past seven weeks. I guess it's been. He, he's got a place somewhere in town, somewhere in the old town. Uh, not exactly sure where we're, we're all this is where we're told to stay um but you know the highfalutins they got their own they got their own uh places to stay in town mm, so the, the, does your captain do like no my like would your captain know where he hit off if i asked him or he didn't even tell your captain my, my, my captain, Captain Kirsten, he went down with the ship. He's oh. he's gone. Okay. So he wasn't on shore at that time. He was with the ship. Okay. So uh, I assume because he told me the same story, so now I know about the refugees and the pooslings, I guess. So uh, can you tell me more about those refugees? Like, have you ever met any of them? Like, did you tell, did they tell you, like, uh, what are they escaping from or what happened to them? And he says, oh, I'll tell you what I know. We'll pause there and we'll okay. get to Molly. Okay. How are you doing? Are you getting thirsty? You see um, the uh, furball come back in and he's carrying with him uh, two big pots um, of looks like something hot and steamy in there. And he sees you when he comes back out and says, hi, Les, can I bring you anything? It was Andrea. Oh, sorry, I didn't okay. realize you were speaking with me. Can, oh, can sorry, you tell me again? To, to, to yeah. Molly. Ah, uh, this guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I watch. Can you tell me again? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. No, no problem. No problem. So, uh, so he, he this is the uh, bartender, and he went back into yeah. the the looks like. I mean, you can see it through there. It looks like a Kitchener, and he came back. And he's carrying two big, like uh, pots of of something hot and steamy, and it smells good some sort of stew perhaps and he sees you and you know he's a big tall furball he's like seven and a half feet tall got a big belly on him apron stained apron and he just he just asks you says uh hey there lass you're doing all right can i bring you anything you like a drink a little food perhaps i i watch him and i i give him a small smile they say oh thank you sir yes i will like some food and a drink definitely Excellent. I'll put these down. I'll be right back. He heads off. Um, and you notice in the other direction that the uh, family of tieflings is still there and still watching you. They're still watching me. Okay. Not creepy. I'm at really uncomfortable. I'm really <laughs> uncomfortable. I try to kind of sit so that I don't do not face them. <laughs> because really. <laughs> and as you're doing that. Um, Around the corner comes Captain Glover. And he sees you and gives a wave um, and says, you're doing all right out here. Beer's inside. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, he heads in. Do you, do you stop? Do you want to say anything to him on his, on his way across? No, I, I say no more. OK. So he waves and just gives you a smile. And, and he heads inside. Yeah. The and he will head over to uh, here, I suppose. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else, Molly? 
no, I just wait for my food. Really, unless I'm forced to, there will be no interactions from Molly. Yep. Okay. Let me see what happens. Give me time. The family still staring at you. <laughs> Um, okay, let's move. Um, to... I hope that family gets bored eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you can see you can see that the young girl like tugging on her on her mother's apron. It was right pull her away. But, I see. Uh, the boy, so especially the boy with like the one leg, is just like staring at you. I feel like that white guy that went to a very rural village in China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty, pretty that's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um Elvin, what are you doing? Gills, you there? Oh Gil. Hey, Z, you there? No, it's uh, Gilles. Uh, oh, sorry, it's, I was on the, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Not me, right? So, so talking, talking, I'm looking at things. So Gilles, just so you know, so you see the um, the bartender who you you talked with briefly when you ordered your drink, and uh, he introduced yeah. him, he introduced the, the bartender here. He introduced himself when you first bought your drink. He introduced himself as Ian Mar, Ian Mayer, yep. sorry, Ian Mayer, and um, yep. seems like a nice enough guy. And he's now going back with a couple of big pots of stews that he carried in from inside. Um, he puts one down here on the table. Oh, nice. Uh, and then the other uh, pot he can carries down to the stairs here, and he heads down the stairs. OK. And then um, I didn't uh, notice that Captain Glover also came in and took a seat beside you. OK. Um, I, I, I'm excusing myself uh, discreetly. And uh, I'm going to follow this guy using a stealth movement. Okay. Uh, you want to do stealth or give me, uh, give me a stealth check? Yeah. Uh, I hope I don't do a grand uh, five or something. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, how do I do it? Shift. Okay. Oh, no. I had it. No. Uh, where do I get my character sheet? It's a shift. shift. Shift double click should open it up for you on your token. Ah, okay. Okay, stealth. Here we are. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Oh. Um, so I I probably stumble in uh, in the stairs and uh, when I know that I've made the noise, I call his name. Hey, hey, are you there? Are you there? I says, hey, you hear you from down below. Says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be right back up. Uh, just just uh, hang on a minute. I'll uh, I'm just uh, getting some supplies and I'll be right back up. Okay. Anything I can notice with my uh, dark vision? Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, where is my uh, perception? Here we are. Okay. Um, you don't see anything, um, but you hear what sounds like it might be a young child crying. Oh my god. Okay. Where well but somewhere somewhere down the stairs from, from within there. You know, you can't tell exactly. Okay. Um, okay, so I said nothing to, to uh, I don't pursue, and uh, I come back uh, discreetly as if I went to something. I come back to the table, keeping in mind I heard a child. Okay. Um, anything you anything want Anything from our captain that has uh, just seated uh, at the table? Uh, so the captain's sort of looking around at, at everybody here, and he's sort of t trying to take it all in. He's asking a bunch of questions. Very similar questions to the ones that you all have been asking, um, mm -hmm. just to all the other crew. Um, mm -hmm. and, and he's uh, the, the expression on his face is quite surprised and shocked to see all these, these crew members here. Um, okay. but he's uh, he's just arrived, so he's trying to take it all in. Okay, okay. um, all right, let's go um, to I think we next is uh. 
Urbis. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, should be me. Yeah. All right. Uh, I see we have a strong opponent. Okay. We play another round. Uh, yeah, I mean it's not finished yet. Uh, so let me roll my thingy. Um, by the way, while I'm um, just because why not, and I have spell slots left. While I'm thinking of, about my next move, I do hum to myself. I well, I pretend to hum to myself and uh, flick my fingers, and uh, I try to cast detect magic. Okay. Um. Uh, so, so yeah, ju just as like nobody would like it, it's just an old man humming. <laughs> yep. I, I think you can do that. It's not not a problem. Um. They, they, if there was another spellcaster nearby, they might. Yeah, they might, might pick up on that. But if it's, they might pick up on if that. Sealers, like they appear to be, they, they you think they probably would. Yeah, especially the fact that uh, Jacob here was uh, mentioning something about those refugees over there. Just on the off chance, like thirty feet around me, do I sense any magic? Okay, uh, you do not. Do not. Okay, just wanted to check that. Cool. And let's roll the thingy. Another round. Ooh, now beat that, youngster. Give me a perception check. A perception check, sure. Sure. Ooh, now I'm rolling good. 21. So you notice that um, as you were doing your, uh, as you were making your, both making your moves and you were doing your, detect magic and you were sort of looking around sort of looking for aura yeah left and to your right and behind you um when you look back you notice that jacob had tried to move a piece to a ah. position where it wasn't before ah. he was basically blatantly trying to cheat but ah. <laughs> you weren't looking okay well i'm not going to call him out on that just yet but i did notice it then all right so okay. we're one on one right now, so I guess. Um, and just just one one question, Jacob. Uh, um, like how long are you guys going to stay here, anyways? Well, we have our way. We'll be uh, we'll be on the the ship tomorrow and uh, on our way back home. Uh, oh, that's that's really good for you. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, especially since it's going to be your ship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our mission was to come here and find out what's happening uh, so you guys can go home. But yeah, but be very careful on the way home. Uh, we've seen a big sea monster. Oh yeah, we've seen those as well. Oh, you've seen those as well? All yeah, right. Uh, every passage, but... Uh... The orbs will guide us and should give us clear passage through. That's what oh, they're for. So your captain had an orb as well. Yeah, well, there's uh, as far as I know, there's uh, five of them all in total. Oh. Uh, so there was one on the Arbite, one on the Kincardine. We had one on the Ert. Imagine it must have gone down with the ship. The captains are the ones in charge of those. Huh. Um, so that's three. I guess you all must have one and there's a, there's a fifth one, as far as I know, uh, that's what we've always been told. There's a total of five of them. Uh, maybe it all, and on, on another ship of, of the merchant skill, we, we don't, I, I have no idea. Okay, noted. Well, you definitely say that it went down with the ship. Well, I wasn't there, but that's, you know, the captain's the one. With the captain. He his captain in his cabin. All right. Uh, Dane's going to make a mental note of that. Because mm -hmm. uh, that orb was really interesting. All right. Um, next. Okay. Um, back back to the top of the round. All right. Uh, so now it's to Illinois. Uh, okay. So we resume our conversation from earlier. I was asking about the refugees. The refugees. Well, you could probably talk to. Uh, Old Ian Mar over Ian Mar over there. He's uh, 
is more friendly with the refugees. They, the refugees, you know, back in the day, they'd come in, have drinks with us and, you know, sell some wares and we take some souvenirs back home with us, but uh, they don't come in here anymore. Uh, and uh, we don't see any of the old original townsfolk. They're, they're long gone. Um, so the, 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 the few refugees that we see, you know, are, they, they don't get, they don't come too close uh, when we're around here anyway. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's good riddance that they're responsible for our ship going down. And you, you actually believe that they were the ones who burned your ship? That's what we're told. You know, the guy in charge here, uh, Sol Rios, he, uh, he made it clear what happened. And he said he'd make sure it doesn't happen again, but <laughs> there's no ship for it to happen to, so not much to that promise. Well, I guess there's your ship. That's why we got to get things stocked up. Got to get that uh, turned around and pointed in the other direction by morning if we have our way. Uh, okay, so who is the first guy first? Amir? Who, who, like, where is he sitting now? And you... I, I didn't understand he said again. Uh, no, no, I'm just like uh, checking where he's pointing at. Like, uh, the, the Amir guy, I just want to see where he's sitting now. I, I, maybe I missed it. He wasn't pointing at it. He was sort of just telling the story. Oh, okay, okay. So, are you talking about um, Celrius, the one you were saying was the? Uh, I don't know. The first guy who is friendly with the refugees is he in this bar now, or he's not? Oh, 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 Emir, Emir, yeah, the, the bartender. That's the guy that's. Uh, oh, that's a bartender. Yeah. Oh, As a matter of okay. fact, he um, he comes back up while while you while you are talking. Um, Emir comes back up the stairs. And goes back on the bar. And um, Elvin, roll perception. Uh, I roll perception? Actually, no, what, what Elvin to do this one? Uh, Elvin, oh, okay. Copy this. Yes. Uh, Gil, you still, you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, I'm no worries. rolling perception. Yep, okay then. Okay. You got it? 21. Oh, wow. 20, 23. Okay. 23. So you, you notice when um, when uh, Ian Mayer comes back up the stairs uh, that he's no longer carrying the uh, the big pot of stew that he brought down the stairs. Oh, okay. And he is now uh, filling a mug of beer. He had left one of the pots up here. He fills that pot with a with a, a spoonful of uh he fills a bowl with a, with a spoonful of the of the um stew with beer and starts to head outside back to um Illinois. so you, you just noticed that just just as an fyi yep yep. yep yep um, okay so the other guy reads uh he wasn't you said he was in charge but like who is he exactly like? Who made him in charge? Yeah. So he, um, the guy says, so yeah, so no, the uh, the bartender, he's he's in charge of this this of this inn. His name is Ian Mayer. The uh, the guy who's in charge of the town, his name is Silrius. He's he's been in charge as long as I know. So he's, he's like the mayor. He's a mayor. Kind of like I guess you call him that. Sure, mayor. That works. I don't know what they call it around here exactly like, but yeah, mayor. Okay, and he just told you like the your ship was burned by the refugees, and that's it. But nobody actually saw those refugees like go in the boats and burn it and come back. Uh, I didn't see that. That's just what okay. I heard happened. And when your ship burned, it, like you said, that recently the refugees haven't been coming here. You don't see them that much. So did this happen before your ship got burned or after your ship got burned? Uh, the refugees haven't been coming into the nymph for for a long time now. For uh, for I don't know for as long as we've been here. And from when I'm talking with the the guys here from the Kincardine, it sounds like they they haven't been really coming into the nymph for you know. I guess things still once things started getting really bad, they just came in less and less. Um, the uh, 
the townsfolk that we used to be friendly with back in the day, they, we, haven't, we haven't seen them at all. Um, nobody's seen them. We, we hear they've just moved south. Yeah, so you didn't even see them before your ship burned, like when you actually went on shore after or not basically and then after your ship burned ray said that it was sure like burned by the refugees but actually before that they already weren't coming here that much this correct the refugees weren't coming inside of this bar and inside the nymph there were plenty of refugees around the city around port Galwatch. they've been they've been flooding in the past couple of months but maybe a little longer from what i hear from the others here um and there have been refugees here from what we hear for, oh, I don't know, uh, since before the, uh, they took the Kincardine and the Arbite. Um, it's been, you know, a year or more since there have been a few refugees, at least, and there have been more and more and more. And in the past few months, they've, uh, they've just been flooding in from the North Gate and uh, piling up there. There's like a refugee town or something, like a, like a, they're, they're just piled up around the North Gate up there, from what I understand. So was Ray's also the same guy who told you that the King Cardine was like uh, taken by the government or the council? Yeah, that that's Solrius told us that. That's uh, well, he he told us we you know we we saw them, we saw the crew. Um, actually, sorry, this is the uh, the guy from the King Cardine speaks up when he's talking about that. The guy from the Urtica, This all happened before he got there. Um, oh, yeah. Him. So the guy from the King Cardine says, yeah. So you know, we saw that the. the the tiefling crews that came up um, and uh, we were told by Silrius that, that we needed to stay put and and uh, our Captain Holtz, he told us that, uh, yeah, we, we needed to do what we were told. The uh, captain from the Arbite was none too happy, but he did what he was told too, which is unusual for that one. And uh, they, they, they sailed it off the next day. We haven't, you know, no idea what happened to it. Well, he is... So, so, yep, go ahead. I don't know. So you said the captain of the Arbite. So, so they took the Arbite and the Concordian at the same time? Like they took both of them at the same time? Same time, same day. Two crews. That's right. They weren't big crews either. Maybe maybe eight guys each, something like that. Like half half size crews. Then again, you know, we're, our crews were crewed up for sailing all the way across the Forbidden Sea, so that's a big voyage. And, and who are those toastlings you keep speaking of? Just they look like just, you know, sailors to us. I mean, you know, sailors can spot sailors. They, they weren't here for very long. They, they, they uh, rode up, they, uh, uh, well, they, that time the, uh, King Cardine and the Arbite were, were tied up on at the dock. They just boarded. The uh, watch crews were disembarked and uh, they cast off and sailed away. That was that. As he's talking, um, you see Molly, this guy, yeah. come past you. And you just get like a as he walks past, you just get a almost revolting feeling, like a shudder that runs through you. And he sort of looks at you as he passes, looks sort of like over his shoulder, looks at you, looks you up and down, and gives you this really greasy, lecherous smile. And then he, he walks. Past. How does he look? He looks. How does he look? A whole lot. See if this shows. Tell me if this shows up. Oh. I actually, since this is happening, without any shyness, I watch him back. Okay. Not smiling, but kind of studying him. Gotcha. And he just gives you a smile and he turns his head forward and keeps walking. And he sort of gives a bump into... Uh, to EMR, you know, like a shoulder bump as he, you know, not not a, not in a friendly way as he walks past and walks into the uh, into the nymph's rest as uh, Ian Mayer 
comes out with uh, a bowl of stew and um, a mugful of ale. Back to um, to uh, Eleanor. Eleanor, you see um, this guy come in. To did you did you all see the image when I shared it? Does that work? Yeah. 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 Okay. So you see this guy come in, and um, as he comes in through the front door, sort of everybody gets quiet. And he comes in and he sort of stands here and he looks around and he sees and his eyes focus on the two sailors from the Arbite in the upper left corner. And he just glares those at two. them. Yep, those two. And they see him and like their faces go white. And he walks over here to them and stands behind them and sort of leans down and is like whispering to them quietly. And his hand is like caressing their shoulders and in, in this really kind of just oily kind of way. And he's like smiling with in a way that as he's talking to them it just seems just horrifically evil. And they they're both just ashen. They're not looking around at all. They're just dead quiet. And um, Glover turns around, looks behind him when everything goes quiet. And uh, um, Elvin, you just hear him say the word booth. Booth? Booth. Like drinks? Uh, B-O-O-T-H, booth. Okay, okay. Um, okay, and um, give me one second. Okay. Um, so we're still with uh, Eleanor. Henrik, uh, another chance for questions or reaction. What do you do? Well, I, I lean towards the guy uh, who was speaking to me earlier, this guy, and I ask him, wow, the mood just changed when this guy came in. Who is this guy? And he says in a very quiet voice, he says, that's Booth. He's the first mate of the Arbite. You don't want to mess with him. As, as uh, what? I'm sorry. One more time. Yep, yep. He said, uh, he said this in a low voice, but he said, that's Booth, the first mate from the Arbite, and you don't want to mess with him. The first. First mate. Like, uh, first mate is um, the next right. command after. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I just didn't hear you the first time. Yep. And uh, but why does he look so dangerous? And uh, okay. I will give you the reaction to that. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Next round. Um, so we. Sorry, I forgot to order this guy, you guys. I think it's uh, back to Elvin now. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go towards the. I I'm picking my pint, and I'm going towards the the, the bar. Okay. To look um, casually, look at the, the food that was prepared, uh, and that uh, was brought to down the stairs, and uh, inspect more or less the quality of the food. Is it a high quality food or, or, or reasonable quality or something like uh, you you would feed uh, people you want just to maintain alive? Yep. Okay. I, I understand where you're going with that. Uh, so uh, just to clarify, so, so when he first came in back from the kitchen, he was carrying two large pots. Yeah. Um, one of them he had left there at the bar. The other one he brought down the stairs and then came back up the stairs without it. So the ah. one that's there now is the one that he first dropped there and he from that pot he filled um uh, a bowl and then he walked out the door with that bowl and a mug okay and uh, uh, what's and the one, general but, quality of the food yeah so um you smell it it looks um you know it looks like yeah sort of bar and in kind of stew um but it smells quite good okay uh then uh, I, I will uh progress towards the stairs on the yeah. on the just discreetly uh, start to go down. 
Okay. Are you going to try and uh, do this stealthily? Uh, uh, not, no, not really. More <laughs> like uh, I, I'm cautious. Uh, just more nonchalant. Yeah, nonchalant. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, so you go down the stairs, and yeah. uh, at the bottom of the stairs, there's a, and I'm sorry, I don't have a map to turn to, but okay. at the bottom of the stairs, there's a door, um, and it's closed. Okay, I open the door. Okay, you open the door, and there's just, in the room, there's a large cellar room um, okay. with uh, just a large open room. You see casks and and uh, shelving and crates, um, which uh, some of them are open. It looks like food stock. Um, and all around in the center of the room, it's quite a large room. It's, it's, you know, about the space, about okay. the space of the, the sort of the main room where you are now, we're up to the edge of the bar. Um, it's got maybe, there may be 20 or 25, um, looks like, uh, refugees, basically, um, local villagers oh. of different races. There are some, uh, uh, fear bulgs there. There are uh, some tieflings there. There are some nymphs there. They're all sort of the standard races that you see around there. And there's uh, even one centaur there, which is the other oh, common okay. race you know of that uh, is, is said to inhabit uh, Graladar. So uh, uh, I'm just saying, uh, uh, do, do you guys uh, need more food? Ilma was uh, wondering. And they'll look at you. They're wide-eyed. Um, uh, and uh, they... Um, you know, the two or three of them sort of look at you and they just, they just um, shake their head, not not sort of like in a in, in a stunned way, like they can't believe that that you're down there. Um, and they just they just sort of shake their head, no. Okay, um, so uh, I pat uh, one or two just uh, friendly uh, friendly pat and uh, and say, uh, well, uh, well, I'll come back a bit later, or email will come back to to pick the. And the, the, the same sort of few that gave you direct for sort of give you, you know, sort of a, a nod, sort of again, sort of a confused way. Give me a perception. Yes, uh, I need to click again. Oh, perception. Do I get a sense of this place if those people are here against their will or? Uh... Yep. Um, so that's actually what, exactly what I wanted you to give uh, perception for. Okay, this is it? Is that yeah. Okay. Perception. Um, so yeah, so first of all, you um you don't see anything like you know no one's tied up. Um, okay. The door was unlocked. Um, they're all sort of standing around. They're all sitting around. They're they're all different ages. Um, some are quite old. Um, there's really no one. There there I guess there are fewer that are sort of just of, of um you know uh, young adult age. They're either considerably older, or considerably or some are very young. There are, there are some that are that are um you know sort of uh, young adult to middle age. Um, but one, the common thing that, that strikes you about almost all of them as they almost all seem to be, um, uh, have been injured, um, and uh -oh. have been bandaged in some ways. So some are missing limbs. Um, oh. most of them have bandages. Um, the bandages look, um, not super fresh, but not, not terribly old either. Okay, I, I'm trying to identify who is uh, the most uh, wanted. Is there um, something I can you do? See, I mean, you see, so there's like 20 or 25 of them, and um, a lot of them have very severe injuries, like like you know, one or two limbs missing, um, eyes that are bandaged over, um, and you know, your imagination tells you that it's not pretty underneath. Um, some of them look burned. Okay. Uh, I have berries, uh, you know, good berries. Uh -huh. So I think uh, I'm going to distribute uh, a few of them. Do you have, I'm just curious, do you have any left or did you use those all when you were on the ship? Before? I think, uh, uh, hold on, where, where, is, where is the number of berries I can use? Oh, you yeah. should have 10 by default. It's not eight, I think it's eight. Or eight. I've had in my... Mind that. Here we go. I've got it on the screen. Hold on. Uh, hold on. I clicked on it. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, up to 10 berries, correct. Uh, so, actually, uh, since uh, we had a uh, long rest, we had a long rest, right? No. Or short rest. So. Yeah, because oh, you're only, when that whole thing happened on the ship, you mm -hmm. were only like a couple hours outside the harbor. 
um, and then you just came in. And so this is actually the same day, the same afternoon. I so think you guys are all six... actually, you're, if you're injured, you're still kind of hurting. I guess I should have mentioned. You reminded oh, okay. You Okay, yeah, I think I have six time. berries left, so so I give a few. I, I give four. Okay. Um. So they they take it and they sort of look and they sniff at it. Um. And some of them start to uh, some of them pop into their mouths. Yeah, I encourage them uh, with a friendly, warm smile. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause you there just because I want to jump to Molly because okay, uh, Ian Mayer is over here, so you're down there still. Yep. And um, yeah. uh, uh, Ian Mayer comes and brings you the stew and the uh, mug of ale and says, here you are. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the ale is, is, a, is a little bit flat and the, uh, yeah, the stew doesn't have as much meat as it might have once had. But, uh, you know, we make do with what we got. That's all we got. Uh, so hope, hope it's okay with you. Molly say, thank you, sir. But who's that guy? Oh yeah, he's uh, his name is Booth. He's uh, he's bad news. He's the first mate off of uh, the ship they call the Arbite. He's uh, they've been here for quite a long time now since uh, their ship was taken. I uh, I don't like him. I don't know what to tell you. I I I, I think he's really no good. And well. He, uh, let's just say he's uh, he's no good for those of us that, uh, that that need to live here, especially those of us that um, are struggling right now, if you know what I mean. I watch him and I say, I think I know what you mean. Thank you, sir. He nods and uh, says, enjoy your food. It's uh, it's on the house for, for all of you folk that are uh, here off the ships. You're, um, you're welcome to stay here for as long as you like and we'll feed you for as long as the uh as the meat and the ale holds out i can't promise how long that's going to be at this rate the way things are are heading but sir, uh, we'll do what we can sir yes. is there anything i can do to repay your kindness i don't know maybe you need some uh, some help in the kitchen or something like that and sort of looks at you and you know this I sort of go wide and he, and he scrunches his brow sort of the same time, which gives him a very quizzical look on his face. Like, it's like, oh, no one's ever offered that to me before. That's, that's, that's remarkably kind of you. I am here by myself and I have lost track of how many uh, sailors there are now. They keep growing, but I, I can't ask you to do that though. This is, this is, this is my job. This is my task and I manage the best I can. I, why don't you just, uh, Relax here, enjoy yourself, uh, have some food, and you know if I can think of something, maybe I'll maybe I'll ask you uh, for a little help if if you really don't mind. Uh, but but for now, I, I think I'm managing. Thank you, sir. He nods and uh, heads away. Yeah, and that's it. Actually, since I'm sitting in the table, yeah. um, do I have access to the window? There is any window? um yeah so let's see uh there's a window here mm -hmm. window here i'm really bad at these clicking there okay uh window here mm -hmm. here ah uh, so yeah there is no windows there where i'm sitting i see they are in no the windows back. there yep and okay yeah because there is the chimney i see so there's a door you can see there's a door over here um, this okay, no, it's there. not important. I wanted to know if there was a window there to give a look inside, but I don't yeah. want. Fortunately, no, it I looks just... like that's a fireplace there, is what that looks like. Yeah, that's the fireplace. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I just enjoy my lunch. Okay. And for the time being, I stay here, but I stay kind of alert. Okay. Since, since my past, as you know, is what it is, I want to check whether there are in my opinion, if this guy is kind of a uh, criminal, let's say that, I think he, w he wouldn't be alone. So I just want to look around to see if there is anybody suspecting, checking around, etc. Sure. Give me a perception. Sure. Uh, 
takes a bit of time because I keep moving away from the yeah. computer room <laughs> because my daughter is eating. I see. Okay. There is it. Oh, very good. Okay. Right. You look around. Nice. And you notice when you look, there's that family staring at you. Oh, <laughs> really? Ah, oh, I didn't expect That's that. That's all you see. Yeah. Okay. So I, I see nobody else. You see oh, nobody else. Okay. Nobody else. Okay. So I'm this guy to... is quite full of himself. <laughs> uh, I see. I'm going to shift um, to uh, Fervus. Um, Fervus, as you're sitting there, um, Booth uh, had been talking to these two guys, and he finishes talking to them, and they stand up. They're absolutely shit faced they're drunk and they're trying to walk straight and you know how it is when you're like you're really drunk and you're trying to act like sober <laughs> so they're trying to walk straight and they walk towards the door and booth walks behind them a little ways behind and they are unless somebody anybody can say something they want to do something but otherwise they're they're sort of walking out the door um booth walks over to the door and he spots um, Captain Glover, your captain, over yeah. there, and he looks at he looks at him as he walks out the door, and gives him that same oily, snaky, evil <laughs> expression as he walks out. And you can, uh, especially Elvin, who's there. Oh no, Elvin's not there. Uh, who can see him? Um, both both um, both Fervus and Eleanor can see um, Glover and, and see him just go stiff um, and, uh, you know, almost shaking as, uh, as Booth walks out the door. And then out the door, and again, anybody stop me if they want to do anything, but they're just walking. Um, so anyone who's inside loses sight of them at this point. Ian Mayer goes back behind the bar, gets bumped again by Booth on the way. And they turn the corner here, Molly, and are heading up in this direction. Um, I will go back to um, Fervus unless anybody wants to do anything. Okay, interesting. Well, following them alone would be dangerous unless we all speak and decide to follow them together, I guess. It's not that good yet. Uh, well, I guess Jacob did look at them as they passed, right? Yes. Well, I guess to be accurate, he um he averted his eyes and looked sort of straight down, like intent more intently at at, at the uh, the dragon uh -huh. chess board than he's actually been paying attention during the game. <laughs> Suddenly, very interested in the game. Uh huh. I see. Well, I take that chance to cast because I remember he was uh, trying to cheat. Yep. I'll take the chance to cast guidance on myself. I didn't plan to use guidance when I'm uh -huh. doing chess. Only if someone cheat tries uh -huh. to cheat. Uh huh. So same. Okay. I'm trying to cover it with a with a little old man's hum. Room, 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 room. Give me a sleight of hand check. Sleight of hand. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba, sleight of hand. Well, I'm not proficient in this. <laughs> That's okay. It's an eleven. Okay. Um. Okay. So we're. Uh. It's it's your it's your, uh, your role play. Do you say anything or just play? Uh. Yeah. I'm as I'm doing that. I'm also asking Jago like, uh, what ship are those guys from? Do you know them? Yeah, I know them. Uh, not as well as maybe some from the Concardine, um, but you know, even after eight weeks, I know who they are. They're they're from the Arbite. They actually they don't stay here with the rest of us. Um, it's they're not. Booth doesn't like it when they come here in here and, and drink. They're uh, they're not supposed to mix with us. So no, I see. They, uh, so they're mean bastards a lot. Uh, so I'm happy to see them leave, but yeah, that's the Arbite crew. That's uh, that's Captain Gage's crew. I see. 
Mm. Well, the Arbeit sounds like a lot of work. Uh, and um, I guess I do here then pass through because the, there's this window, right? Uh, yep. And if you look out the window, you can see them. Yeah, I'm doing a half take. Uh -huh. The same way I'm I'm trying to keep, like, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to do, but I'm trying to focus my peripheral vision if Jacob wants to do something shifty again. But, you know, uh -huh. I'm taking a quick gaze outside the window, and then so suddenly I turn my head back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can picture that exactly. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, just just as this guy like was walking outside the uh, place, uh, I kind of because I think like Fervus is very close to me now. We can see each other, so I'm, I kind of signal to Fervus if we should follow this guy or not, and just to check for his opinion. Okay, I mean I I probably see you trying to signal me, so I give you a slight nod, and well I take that as a sign of. Uh, we need to finish our little chess game soon. So um, let's see. Oh, I'm probably OK. That's a seven. Oh, wow. OK. That is the game, my friend. Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, I slap. Um, 10 silver pieces on the table and uh, thank him for the game, of course. Well, Jacob, uh, I hope uh, we can have another sometime, but right now uh, I feel like I need to grab some fresh air, so excuse me. Anytime, I'll be here. Yeah, I shake his hand and uh, I'll old man fashion did take you, my wait, walking did you stick. Did you guidance on that, uh, on the 7? Oh, I did not, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> okay. he beat me big time. But right. yeah, I'm going to pause you for a second because I want to go back to Elvin really quickly. Cool, cool, cool. While all this is going on, um, yeah, uh, Gilles, back yes, to yes, uh, back to you. So you've been you you know while this has been going on upstairs, you've been sort of comforting uh, the, the the refugees that you see. Um, yeah. They're you can tell they're sort of they're sort of getting comfortable with you, but they're very very. Um, uh, shy isn't really reserved. Um, they're not frightened exactly, but they're they feel um, uncomfortable. You sort of get the sense they feel uncomfortable. Uh, I'm not insisting. I just uh, just want to 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 have a plausible uh, uh, deniability uh, opportunity. Okay. Opportunity for plausible deniability. Denial or something like. That. Uh, just that, um, yeah, I could be, I could be here to, to help them absolutely, and so they don't think further on that. Yep. Okay. You get the sense that you know they, they, um, you know, there, there is some connection there. Very sort of early stage, you know, general okay. feeling of non, non malice. No, no, there's no, no malice. Okay. Uh, I, if they have finished the, uh, the soup, the, the stew. I start to collect uh, the stand seals to to bring them back upstairs. Um, they're they're actually still still eating because it wasn't. I don't know, ah, okay. They're, they're all, I mean, was, so I mean, uh, just uh, just withdraw back and uh, ask them to uh, tell them that everything will be all right. And just uh, go back to on my, be on my way. They they give you a nod. Okay. Um, are you gonna head back upstairs? Uh, is there anything else uh, in this um, uh, in this room or in the in the corridor that uh, I, I came from, or is just the, the only uh, uh, location? Not really. So the um, the door is sort of right at the bottom of the stairs. There's not really been much of a corridor, and it really just looks like a large storage room of something that you would expect to find yes, in the basement okay. below an inn. Uh, the main unusual thing is all of these refugees, and there. I guess I should describe. There's you know, um, some some mattresses on the floor and blankets uh -huh. and things like that, where it looks like they're, they're actually um, uh, staying here. You don't know for how long or okay. they, you know, what the actual situation is, but it looks like they're they are there. Now, I want to throw a perception check just to 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 make sure there is nothing hidden too much. Yep. 
Um, are you going to spend some time sort of looking around or you're sort of you're no. standing there and doing just, just for sort of a more detailed look around? This no, rather, uh, um, I know that my time uh, here is uh, counted, not to raise a suspicion. So mm -hmm. I'm just doing a, a very quick uh, perception check. Okay. Yeah. It's quite strong. Um, so you look around and um, the only other thing that you see of note um, mm -hmm. is in the corner, um, you see, you know, uh, piles of um, what looks like older bandages. Okay. Um, and I guess the impression you get is that um, uh, whoever these people are that are staying down here, um, they or others have been here for, for quite some time. Okay. Um, it's not something that is, uh, you know, just in the past few days. It could okay. be, be quite some time. Okay. I don't, uh, I don't insist on that. Just uh, uh, come back to, to where I, I come from uh, as if it was a natural thing to do. Okay. Um, so you come back up the stairs and I mean, oh. Oh, I probably cross uh, eyes with uh, Ilmer. Well, let me see if he notices you. I think probably he's going to because you're just yes. walking upstairs. Let's see if he's very much engaged in something else. But good idea. Um, actually, I think I've actually let me do this the right way. This will be more fun. He actually has a character sheet. Where is his perception? Huh? No, but uh, I don't necessarily hide myself. Uh, I'm just acting uh, natural. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, he might just be like, you know, deep in pouring a few or something. Uh, so I'm just curious. Oh, I just noticed. Let's see if she can read this. Uh, here we go. Somewhere. Oh, it's a hidden one. If, maybe he has been following the guys from the R pit as they leave the bar. It is when you come out. It is when you come up the stairs. So he will be watching the R pit guy, Boos. They're um they're he, so so Elvin's come up when uh, they're they've already sort of turned the corner. Um, this is sort of the where things are right now. Is sort of where things are right now. Um, but uh, Ian Mark does, does see you come up the stairs. Um, and he sort of looks surprised. Um, but he doesn't say anything. Uh, I looked at him actually. I insist uh, looking at him. Uh, and in my look, he I think he understands that uh, I know what's down there. And um, I, I want to to see what type of look back I, I get from him. Is it something of anger or uh, or concern or a bit fear? Yeah. Give what, me an check. Yes. Check. Um, character sheet. Inside check. Mm, I have a nice inside section. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So you uh. So you, these are the uh, sort of emotions that you see and you interpret from his face. Uh, one is surprise. Mm. Um, you do not see anger, um, but you see what you think is probably more the, the word that comes to your mind is concern or worry. Okay. So I pause. And he probably, I, I pause so he, as I, is, as um, if I was going to react and I nod towards him um, in a friendly way as if we were connected on the, on the same understanding. Okay. That's, that's all I, I do. Okay. And uh, I go back uh, natural, uh, as if everything was natural to, to my seat. To your seat there. Okay. Um... Great. Now we are sort of back in real time. So all these various things, you know, as, as I was jumping from, from player to player, were sort of all happening at the same time, obviously. Okay. And so this moment in time where we are now, um, basically Booth has turned the corner um, around the edge of the inn and is heading up the street here. Um, and I now turn it back over to all of you and anybody can jump in. We're, we're out of turn-taking mode. Open play. Go ahead. Oh, I, I meet up with service while we head towards the doors and we are going to follow those as I assume. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, I guess that um, Elvin did not see this whole thing about Booth leaving the door. No, no, oh, probably so. not. 
he's just sitting there talking. Um, so we were kind of need to signal to him that come here, come here. Okay, as uh, I see uh, one of uh, my party members uh, standing up, uh, I'll probably uh, pay attention and, uh, and try to understand what he's signaling. So, uh, GM. I... Ah, sorry, sorry, Gil, let's finish. Yes. So I excuse myself uh, in a friendly way and, and say that uh, I have to, to go out. Okay, I'm out. So GM, I hide myself and I try to see where those guys are going. Okay, um, that's great. Give me, uh, first of all, a stealth check and then followed by a perception check. Oh, nice. And um, very good. So you turn around the corner and um, they are, you know, starting to walk up the path here um, and they're not looking behind them. They're, they're just walking up the path. Um, so you, you do see them there, you know, I don't know, let's say 50 feet or so in front of you walking up the path. Yeah, I slowly follow them. I'm curious where they're going. Going. Okay. So you're sort of trailing them from behind a little ways. Yeah. Okay. And um, okay, so what? Uh, everybody else, um, you come out to the courtyard. You saw Fervus, uh, 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 at least, and, and possibly Eleanor as well. Saw them pass by the windows, so you know which direction they're headed. So you could head over around the corner there, knowing that's the direction that they're going if you want to follow. Okay. Uh, I think at, at this stage, my uh, tracking abilities uh, come back uh, naturally as a second nature. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I should be able to, to find my way back to them. Uh, what would it be? Uh, at this point, you do, um, probably. Uh, uh, I don't think you, it's actually, it's, it's, I think at this point you don't actually need to track them yet because they are, um, first of all, you know, they went around the corner or your, 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 your uh, teammates there are sort okay. of indicating that they went around this way. And if you go around the corner, you'll actually see them. Oh, I see. Um, not, not super far ahead of you. I guess by the time you get up there, you know, they're, they're a couple hundred feet, um, ahead of you. Okay. So. So following them. Okay. Catching up. Okay. Um, I'm going to put us onto the larger um, map. Okay. Okay. Um, so they are heading. Um, so you are, you guys are here at the Nymph's Rest. Are you all on this map, by the way? Can you see the map? See the yeah. Map? Sometimes yeah. it takes time to load. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you're there at the Nymph's Rest, and they're heading in this direction, sort of. I should be able to draw better than this, right? Uh, can I do this? Yeah, they're heading in this direction. Um, okay. So are you all trying to do be stealthy or what how are you following them and in what order are you following them? And I assume you catch up with, with Molly who, who you saw a little bit ahead of you and she's been she's been trailing. They're pretty yeah. drunk, so yeah. Um, I think we're fine in a normal just strolling down the street, you know, minding our own business. Okay. I while I keep my stealthy mode. Because I actually I have no idea that Jim is following me as well, so I keep oh, following you? them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they're following you, and you're following them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm stealthy just in case. Okay. I, I roll for stealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I'm happy you guys are here, by the way. <laughs> just the character didn't realize. Yep. Um. Okay. So so Molly's intent and you know very focused on on uh, the, the three characters in front of them, in front of her, and uh, is, is 
proceeding ahead stealthily. And I guess are 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 you all trying to maintain a basically the same differences and follow, or are you trying to catch up with them? I, I assume I'm just to keep following the, them. I'm right? trying to keep the same distance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm following right behind Molly, anyways. Okay. So. So everybody else sees Molly, and you try to catch up with Molly. You'll you'll have to go a little bit faster, you know, to catch up with her. Um, actually, I do my long stride uh, move and just put my uh, hand on uh, Molly's shoulder because basically uh, she's not going very fast. Yep. I think. Yeah, and the, uh, the 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 two sailors with with Booth following he, them. He are not needs going that he way. needs to see me first. I do. Well, okay. Right. Yeah, well, Let me track you. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to track you. I'm going to hunt you. I don't know where you are, but I will find you. Is, is that a favorite enemy? <laughs> uh, where is my uh, my uh, character is sheet? A favorite enemy? Okay. So how do I get to my character sheet? No. Uh, I don't have my token, so how do I get? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so if you actually go to your journal, your character should be there, and you should be able to double click on your character from the journal. Uh, let me roll a, a d20 and oh, add a plus uh, five, I think. Mm. Eh? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. And you're like, oh, Molly should be up there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me, give, give me, give me a minute. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you guys are you guys are, are proceeding along the street, um, following, uh, presumably Molly somewhere, and uh, <laughs> you also notice that uh, uh, Eleanor is sort of blended into the shadows somewhere, and <laughs> you're not quite sure where he's going either. Um, but you're uh, you're all heading down the street, um, and uh, they keep going. They're sort of now heading in this direction and they turn a corner here and are heading up this way. You come around a corner and give me a second here. Uh, sorry, I really hate the map system on Roll20, I gotta tell you. I'm not gonna work this way. I'm so definitely afraid that I have like revealed more stuff and I'm gonna do all sorts of spoilers, but hopefully not. Hmm. Hopefully this all works. All right. Okay, you should be able to see like a street and a couple of houses there. Yeah, it's still loading, but it's loading. Okay. It will be here eventually. Okay. Yeah. We see two roofers, half roofers. Yeah, good. Okay. So this is like a street. This is the, the streetway and the the um there. What? Yeah. yeah. So you you guys are there, and I'll put your characters in here. Actually, there is a function I found while GMing, Richard. Uh -huh. That it's very very nice. If you hold Shift and uh, hold the left button of the mouse, you can force all players to focus on that area of the map. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Shift and then uh, hold hold the hold the left button. Yeah, exactly. Okay, sort of like the the circle thing. Okay. Um, let me guys get your guys' characters here real quick. Uh, let's go right here. Molly's a little ahead. Uh, and let's get the water. Okay. Oh, so you're there. So um, they went sorry, this way. Oh, that's a terrible arrow. They went that way. Okay. Um, everybody, rule perception. Perception. Okay. And who are we missing? Oops, there we go. Last. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Probably even Virgo still heard this. Um, you hear coming from this direction a uh, woman's scream. Oh. 
but the guys went this way, right? The guys went that way, and from this direction is a screen. Okay, I I don't get distracted. I keep my focus here. Okay. I go to the direction. Yep, okay. Uh, and let me just ask, what, what is Furbis doing? So it looks like um, uh. he is going that way. What's Furbis doing? Uh. Yeah, I'll join the ranger. Okay. I will reveal what you see. There's a street there. Um, street goes along that way. You can see that. Street goes that way. Houses. All right, you guys can sort of see around. Uh, How do I change the size of my uh, <clears throat> token? Oh, sorry, Let me, I can do that for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, convert a layer here. Thank you. Uh, give me one second here. Okay, um, so Elvin and Fervis, you see um, three tough-looking tieflings um, in front of you, and they have um, this one young nymph surrounded and sort of up against um, the wall of, a, of a, an abandoned house. And lying next to her um, on the ground is a much older uh, Firbold, Firbold uh, female woman, maybe, you know, grandmother age, uh, who is on the ground and looks unconscious, and you can notice um, uh, she has some blood on her head. Okay. Uh, they are probably busy bullying those uh, poor uh, people. They so I uh, don't accept that. What I'm going to ask you to do is roll an issue. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Again? <laughs> so I'm going to let you move. I'm not, I'm not saying that, they're, that they've noticed you yet, but, but I want to go into order now. That's all. Uh, um, okay, because I wanted to go stealthily behind them. Yeah, you'll have a chance. You'll have a chance. I'm, okay. I'm, I just wanted to do this in order. Um, so uh, before we, uh, I just want to know what order you guys are in at this point. Okay. Oh, wait, I got to get the tracker up here first. Stay behind. Okay. Uh, already, you know, at this point, distances and things like that matter. Okay, hold on. Uh, got uh, how many to do initiative? I'll uh, click your token first, but yeah, you got it. Perfect. Yeah. It's a 12.17. It's yeah. a very specific initiative. Yeah, the point, like 17, the point 17, the meaning is to realize the boost faster whenever yeah, you no, have the same the number. Stuff. Yeah, I don't like it because what it does is it, it, it because the the monsters work the same way and it reveals what the dexterity of the monsters are. Mm. Yeah. So you kind of you know get meta knowledge. You know what? We can go to our character. Uh, we can mo manually modify the initiative and remove the. Right, that should be I don't care so much for the players. It's more for the more for the monsters that, I, that bothers me. I've been meaning to go in there and fix it. For oh. And yeah, I think I can't, but maybe you, GM, yeah, you can basically fix oh, manually. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Tell okay. us, you have six points initiative bonus. Wow. Who am I missing? ZA needs to roll initiative. Yeah, but your dex is higher, so you get to go first. Oh, uh, uh, we also saw, oh, okay, everybody does. Oh, sorry, I saw yeah. only the tubes and we're doing it. No, let's do okay. it because it depends what you guys do. You don't have to join, but I just want to know where everybody is. Okay. Oh. okay. So there um, is my girl. Nice initiative, Z. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um so I'm gonna, lucky. I'm gonna let you all do do you all have you know a decision making round here to decide what you're gonna do and how you're going to react and what you're gonna try. Um uh if that's going to involve attacking right away, then I'll roll their counter initiative and see if they, they notice you or not. But for now, um ZA, what what do you do? You can 
as you're passing, you do look back and your line of sight lets you see at least one of these tieflings on the edge. And you see these your, your teammates heading down to the south. Do you keep following Molly in that direction to the west or do you do something else? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going west. I just want to see what uh, the guys from the Arbit are doing. I'm, I'm confident that my friends are strong enough to handle these guys. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, great. Okay. So uh, next, so let me read this order here one second. That's wrong. Sorry. That okay. Good. Okay. Um, Molly, what do you do? So I have no, I have no sight of the people we were following. Um, the people you were following, um, you see turning a corner in front of you. So they're they're going to disappear from view in just a moment. Did I realize what's happening here? You do or realize. Not... You, you heard okay. a scream. You see your other guys going, and you can see at least the edge of one of these guys here. Um, so you, you, you know enough to know there's something going on down there. OK, I'm going to, I'm going to, <laughs> I forgot the English word for it. I'm, uh, and unfortunately, the Italian word sounds like an offensive word in English. No, go ahead. Oh. Let's hear it. Well, I'm going to, uh, I, I remember. I remember. I delay. My delay. Turn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because well, well, you know, you know, I delay in Italian is uh, retardare. Sounds like retard. Uh, so no, no. I didn't want to no, say. No, no. I didn't want to say it. So yeah, I delay. Ma. Je retard yeah. in French. It's the yeah, same. it is yeah, the same as French. Delay. Yeah, I was gonna say that. That's interesting. Uh, Okay, um, so you do, that's fine. Okay, so um, yeah. it is now to Elvin. What, what do you, what do you, you said something about trying to be stealthy. Okay. Um, so this is what I have in mind. I want to go stealthily behind them and then bring a sword close enough to the, uh, the throat of one of the tiefling, of a boss tiefling, probably. The one that seems more vocal, and uh, and say uh, hold on uh, and and try to to put myself in a in a good negotiating position. <laughs> I like that. Okay, the, the thing is, let's talk about it in a second. First of all, if you guys want to, you can you can move your characters a little bit further back and closer to the wall of that house if you want to, because this map is kind of condensed and you really would have seen them a little bit earlier. Okay. So you can do you know something like that as, as your starting position because you would have. Heard the scream, and you wouldn't have missed. You, you would have seen him sooner. Um, so, um, Elvin, uh, Gills, you can roll stealth and see. Um, try to go stealthily. There's no place to hide. They're out in the open, so you won't be hidden to them um, if you if you get exposed. So, if they see you or hear you or notice you, um, you know the, you'll you'll be exposed right away. But are, are so. they uh, focused on uh, bullying those uh, pure? Uh, poor, uh, um, poor creatures. Well, um, so they they are they are somewhat occupied, um, but that's going to depend a little bit on how good your role and how bad their role is. And just okay. to give you context, this one here is is sort of facing to the north, more or less in your direction. So okay. it's not like they're completely oblivious necessarily. You do a fantastic role. It's possible without your role. That was your initiative. That was, yeah, that was these initiative rolls. Yeah. 15. Okay. So um, you can try and move ahead and uh, see what happens. So who, who seems the boss to me? Sorry? Who is the boss? Who looks the boss to me? I, I think at this stage, um, you, you won't have had a chance to determine that. And so in a moment, we're going to go into actually, we'll see what their initiatives are. And you could, you know, do a like an investigate trick or something to try to figure that out. But right now, I'll just tell you that you there's you don't really get a sense of that. Nobody sort of stands out as the boss. They're all okay. sort of they're all they're all being very aggressive towards uh, okay. the one that's standing. That's sort of the, the impression. So uh, I go behind this one. Okay, so you're not quite there yet. Let's that's that you've started to go in that direction. Let's say. Stealthily, uh, but uh, yeah, stealthy. I hear you. So we're going to see what we're going to see. What happens? I'll do a few rolls in a moment. So let's let's keep you back here for now until we do their initial. So I, I come from here. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to try to. Yeah. But for now, let's start you just for the start of your turn. We'll start you here, and I know I understand what you're trying to do. Okay. But okay. Let's see before because in other words, if they 
if they see you, you won't make it that far. If they don't see you, you'll make it that far. Okay. Um, okay, uh, let's go to uh, Fervis. What is your intent at the moment? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess I see Alvin going into stealth mode. Yeah. Uh, I'm just... Well, I guess I hold my action to see like if they're hostile or not, and I'm I'm trying to watch what Elvin is trying to do. Yep. Okay. Like I don't um, want to blow his cover. I'm just basically waiting for him to either get seen or do something. Okay. I follow you. Um, I'll go back to Molly. Molly, um, do you want to take your action now, or you're still holding? It? Ah, Molly is on mute. Ah, yeah, I was a speaker on mute. Thank you for telling me. Uh, yeah, I hold my action. I really want to know what my team is going to do before. Yep. And I want to keep an eye on the until I can yep. to the bad guys. Yep. Time, time is sort of frozen at the moment, so they're still getting okay. ready to turn the corner, but they have not yet turned the corner. Okay. Um, okay, so... Um, I will now roll their initiative and I will do check screen. So let's see how I do that. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. They did pretty well. <laughs> wow. They are on the prime. They're on fire. Okay, um, so I'm going to roll two perception checks here. Uh, do I, oh, actually, they had them. This is really cool. I think it's going to be a whisper roll, though. Can I do it as a minus roll? Uh -huh. I'm going to do this stuff out in the open, but I have it all. I did all these macros ahead of time for every one of these characters, and I, I, I put in all the codes to make it whisper. Um, uh -huh. Oh, let me see. Uh, Passive perception. Uh, what was your 15? Okay. I don't know. I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to have to roll this here. Let's tell you what it was. So he rolls. Does not see you. First one. Second one. Um, Not to you. Okay. Um, and that's not his turn yet. You are holding your turn. And he's probably okay. Elvin, I'm going to let you do this. Um, I will let you take your turn now. And I'm going to give you um, effectively surprise. But the, 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 they've done their turn. They, they rolled perception. They didn't see you. So um, you can take your turn at this point. Um, you won't be hidden. Um, from them, so but you, um, you know, they're they're not noticing you. Okay. Um. What do I? Uh, okay, so how far can I get uh, to them? You can go. You can use your full movement. You can do what it's, okay. your, it's your turn now, basically. That so been... that's my movement. Do I notice who is uh, who looks the most senior out of uh, the three? Um. You you don't. Uh, immediately see that you could do uh, an investigation check, but that would be an action to get more information. But just at looking at them, your general sense is they're, you know, sort of like what you just feel like are, are you know, street thugs, basically. Okay. Um, you don't um, see okay. one that doesn't stick out. Okay. So uh, I go, um, I have double swords. So I go behind two of those guys. Draw my swords uh, uh, close to their throats and uh, <clears throat> uh, start to tickle them and, uh, and press on the on the veins. So they, they start to feel extremely uncomfortable and they realize that uh, it will be very bad for them if they made a, 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 a swift move. Okay, so you've come up behind them and you're basically threatening them with your sword and like you have one sword right at which guy, the one, the one there in the middle, right in front of you? 
Yeah, those two. No, I have two. Oh, two of them. You have so, two. I get so, it. So one yeah. of each. So, I, I, and I just say, uh, um, sorry, this is a very awkward situation. Okay. Got it. And if they move, actually, they, they will uh, they will probably uh, hurt themselves. So I, I press enough so they shouldn't move. Okay. I the, so. You're up to them. You get up to them. You're, you know, you make you make the sound. They're they're um, we're sort of in semi combat mode. So so in order for that to actually have an effect on them, we we roll an attack at a time. Should you choose to attack, but your action, from what I understand it, is to sort of threaten them and uh, sort of are you trying to intimidate them or you're trying to do what exactly? What, what's the? It's probably uh, it's probably a very strong intimidation. Yes. Okay. Yes. No attack. I I, I yeah. don't I don't attack. You don't attack it. Can you give me an intimidation roll? Yes. Intimidation roll. Where is my intimidation? Oh, that's it. Shouldn't it be at an advantage since they are surprised? Um. No, for this case, I I'm, it's, it, I don't think they would have advantage on intimidation. Um, I don't I don't really see the okay. So they are not intimidated. The reaction I guess. intimidation, yeah, it's it's more of an emotional reaction to who you are and what you are. They're, you know, they might be taken by surprise a little bit, but it's that's what it is. So they, you know, they see the, the situation is a situation. You know, suddenly there's somebody behind them, so it's not completely necessarily ineffective. Um, but they um. They're now looking at you and, and starting to turn. Um, I will then go to Furbus. Furbus, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. Well, seeing <laughs> that that happened, hmm. these are five feet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are five feet. Yes, they are. It'd be 10 feet on this one. I'll look all five. It's a big mm, Maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right. 10, 15, well, nonchalantly. I'll just walking stick here. Uh, look at them and tell them, Now, now, there is no need for violence. Lay down your weapons. Let's have a chat. Okay, and uh, so they, they're sort of now looking, you know, between uh, Elvin and Farvis and Elvin and Farvis, and they're like, <laughs> back and forth. Um, yep. Molly, you're still holding? I guess yes for yep. the time being. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, it is uh, this one's turn. Um, he looks. This one um, just sees an old man and this guy with swords mm -hmm. and his two guys. And so he sort of looks at Alvin, looks at the old man, looks at his guys, and he moves to. Here. Okay. And he's gonna swing the swords. Oh, okay. Oh, you want to piss off? If I see, me, huh? if I see this option, there is anything I can do before he swings his sword. You know, I um, I think, uh, in this case, I didn't get an actual trigger for for a uh, for a ready action. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. You are right. Um, yeah. I will tell you what was my intention. Okay, so sure, go ahead. I, I don't want to attack him, but I would like to reveal him my position, maybe by shooting a, a purposely missed uh, firebolt, like in front of him. I think, Andrea, on this one, because this is the guy that's moving, when he moves... This one, yeah. Ah, no, it's this one. It's this oh, one, okay. yeah. When and then, moves, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, exactly. never mind. Yeah, he yeah. he wouldn't have actually. Sorry, he was here. Where was yeah. he? Here, here. I think it, I think it was here. Um, yeah. So it's you okay. wouldn't have actually have seen this one. You saw yeah. the one up here, and he didn't. This one likewise didn't see you. So he. Okay. Hey, so here. please go on. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Um, but I'll give you a, a year. You can uh, take your uh, your delayed action after after this guy moves. Okay. Okay. So. Um, he's swinging at Elvin. Uh, if I can go ahead and do this. Okay. Let me read him real quickly. Oh. Okay. Um, he actually, 
I'll, I'll explain this to you guys so it doesn't sound like cheating um, because it would to me. Um, so these guys are tieflings, um, and you can tell it by looking at them. One of the one of the attributes that tieflings have is something called pack tactics, and when they're surrounded by um, an ally um, within a certain short range, then they get advantage on attacks. Mm. Uh, so this guy actually has advantage on his attack against Elvin. Okay. Um, and he is going to swing. Um, mm. Elvin, what is your uh, 14. 14. Oh, shit. This is a really terrible DM. You have to match it or beat it. Matching it hits, right? Yes. It does. Yes. Um, okay, so um, you have to take five slashing damage. Okay. So, um, well, it's you just a scratch. Seen, by the way, you guys haven't had a rest yet. Nope. A... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is very fun. bad. This okay. Is good thing. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> All right. Well, first, first blood. Okay. Yeah. This was not expected. Nope. <laughs> it happened so quickly. Okay, um, that is it for his action, and uh, it is Molly's turn. Okay, well, they are attacking one of my Compagnon. people. So, one, two, three, four, five. I will move here. Yep. And yes, uh, I will shoot a fire mode to this guy. Okay. So I would make a sorry that it's taking some time. There is it. Oh, it's a one, so I can re-roll it actually. I mean so you you he... already rerolled it to a natural twenty. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so I think I it was a critical hit. Awesome. If you accept that, yeah. yeah. yeah I will definitely accept that. Oh. I will definitely accept that. Um so total of ten damage, is that right? Yes, oh, correct. No, it's a critical, so you get to reroll the. Uh, no, it's already. I think they already rerolled because that's it's a D10. So yeah. the program rolled it two times the oh, D10. Oh, I thought see? it was adding a damage modifier. Yeah, I yeah. see. So you have no additional modifier on top of that. So total ten damage. Okay. Yeah. So the bolt goes streaking across, hits the guy right in the back of his head. His sort of hair. Well, he doesn't have hair, really, though, but his his horns sort of light up. Um, on. Fortunately, hold on, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, unfortunately, um, his horns catch on fire, but um, it does seem to hurt him, but maybe not as badly as uh, you would have thought from the, the strength of the hit and the precision of the shot. Mm. Okay. Um, which you do notice. And take note of. Um, do you have any other actions? Sorry. No, no, that's I just moved myself and I shoot that. Okay. Um, it is uh, Eleanor's turn. You're muted. Oh, you're AFK. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, no, I was muted. Yeah, I didn't know. The, I don't want to lose sight of the Arby guys still, so at least one of us should follow them. Okay, they've just because... turned the corner now, so they're, they have turned the corner away. Okay, so um, is this corner? Do I go here? Uh, they're 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 about two hundred feet ahead of you, so they're you know they're 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 a ways ahead. So you would take your movement to to follow them if that's the direction you like to go. Okay, so um, I'm just following them. Okay, what's your movement? Uh, it's 25, but I can uh, use uh, my second story works to make a running jump, which adds my dexterity modifier, basically. So my speed is 25, and I can go up to 28. Oh, I'm sorry, how, how does that work? Let me see your character. Yeah, my normal speed is 25. Because you can take a dash action. And, and I cool. can, yeah, and I can use a second story work to make, uh, like, move and then make a running jump, which would make me basically cover 
a distance which is like basically adds my dexterity modifier and my dexterity modifier is three so it would be 25 plus eight total plus three total which would be 28. let me just read this that's part of your second story work thing yeah, yeah, basically, like when I like what happens, the way I use it is basically you make a running jump and you, you move or you move and this is, has to do with climbing though, not running. The way it's done. So, so like for example, I can I can move. I I don't remember the rules, but it's part of the movement. So I think yeah. running jump was covering I don't know fifteen think, or think, ten feet. I think I think there's an easier way here. Uh, okay. What the second story working with the jump is talking about is increasing the, the normal distance of jump, which is actually not a very long distance. I think it's something like ten feet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so you that, that's exactly. That if you're jumping, but what you can do instead is you take your act, your movement action to move your whatever your, your normal movement is. And then you can take a dash action instead of a combat action to double that. So it's, it's much for, it's much faster if you do it that way, you go, you cover more distance. So your normal oh, yeah, movement yeah, yeah. is 25. So you can go a total of 50 by doing your dash action. Uh, okay, yeah. If That's you're running. Fine. Now, if you're doing your, if you do that, um, you're not going to be in stealth anymore. You're going to be booking it. You're going to be running. So is that is that what you want to do? Well, basically, that's why I didn't want to do the Asian accent. That's why I wanted the, the second story work, because basically I'm trying to jump like a ninja. So the second story works basically doesn't reveal me. The dash would be just too bad. Second story works and the jump still could reveal you. You'd still have to do that. But there's, there's no one to see you right now. They're around the corner, but it, you're just not going to get as far. I mean, it's you're, 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 you're using an action movement to jump, um, but it's... I'm sorry. The thing is, I I don't know what's around the corner. Like, basically, are they going yeah. down or or up? Right. Thing, I, I can't imagine which way they are going. Still, like, are yeah. they going down in the dark alley here? No, like, no, is no, this no. a corner you're talking about? Yeah, no, no. It's uh, it's much further to the left. Um, and you can't. The map isn't big enough to see it. Each one of these squares is five feet. They're two hundred feet ahead of you, and about two hundred feet ahead of you, they have just turned a corner to the right and are heading to the a little bit to the north and you don't know where they're going beyond that there's these are the street ways uh, so you can follow them you can basically in your in your action you can get if you run flat out you could you could cover 50 feet if you just use your basic movement and stay stealthy you need to move at half movement speed um so you would only be getting at a, about a, you know plus a little bit extra even if you want but you know you might be able to get um you know, twenty feet. Twenty feet, yeah. Yeah. But 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 the thing is, because I can't see what's in there. But for example, like they yeah. are moving in this street and turning right, so there should be some houses as well. And yeah. I could basically, because uh, jumping, climbing doesn't cost me anything now, for me. Yes. So I could actually climb, like basically one of the houses and jump on top of the houses to reach them farther, and I would be at the stills because I'm at the top and they can't see me. Okay, but so, because I don't need, I don't see what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, so okay, let's talk about that. So, you could use your second story work to climb. You, I'd still make you take an athletics check for for the climb to see if you can physically climb. But the the second story work means that your movement speed is just the same as you would with normal movement. For for most people, it would be difficult training. You would only have half movement to try to climb. Uh, but you don't have that penalty because of your second story work. So you could use your full twenty five feet to get to the top of the house. So. I would say for your for one move one movement, I would let you to get to the top of the roof, if you um, uh, if you make your athletics check. Um, no, no, no. Uh, climbing. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, it doesn't cost me any extra movement. Correct. Yeah, you get your right? full 25, 25 movement. For a normal person, they wouldn't be able to make it all the way to the top of the roof in one in one mo movement. They would have to use two actions to do that. Okay. You can do it in one, um, but you you still have to successfully climb, uh, which is an athletics check. Okay, fine, but okay. Uh, so if you want to, you can, you can try that. Um, and I think you're right. If you get up to the, uh, if you get up to the top of the roofs, I'd give you, um, I'd give you advantage on any stealth checks from from up on the roofs. Uh, it would be just so you know, um, and you would know this because you are a, uh, you know, you're a you're a burglar kind of guy, so you know about going on roofs, uh, going from roof to roofs. I don't know, for your second story, maybe I wouldn't say that for you. Normally, I would say it's difficult terrain to traverse across the rooftop, but I guess with your second story, work, that, that, that's equivalent to climbing, so I'll say that's not, um, it's not difficult terrain for you. 
Um, if you have to jump from roof to roof up there, um, then uh, I'd still need to ask you to make um, uh, some sort of a check, probably an acrobatics check to see. I did an acrobatics just now. Okay, but this is to climb up, you need an athletics check to climb up, please. So basically, I can either climb up or jump up. Is this what you're saying? No, no, climbing is an athletic strength. Okay, so because I'm not good at athletics, so it's, it's acrobatics for me. Athletics is bad. If you take a look at the uh, at the description of, of athletics and acrobatics, um, athletics is what's required for climbing. It's a specifically required for climbing. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, this, 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 this kind of doesn't make any sense for my character because it's supposed to make climbing easier with second story works, but if it depends on athletics, that just doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, you made it. Yeah, well, like, that's weird. It sort of depends on, it sort of, you know, it, it also depends on the difficulty to climb. Um, so, you know, for, for you, it's not really difficult to climb up, so a 10 would have been enough. Um, so you're, you're fine to make it up top. Okay. So uh, I make it on top and I can just like, uh, yep. like, you know, and you still have one action thousand. left, so you can um, you can move another uh, twenty five feet if you want regularly, or if you want to move stealthily, then you know another twelve feet or so. No, I'm 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 just gonna move on top of the houses, jumping on top of the houses, twenty five feet. Is okay. Sure. Okay, great. So you have made it up to the top. You shoot. You you climb up the wall. Um, you get to the top of the roof, and you're running along the rooftop now. Um, and you've uh, made some distance. Uh, sort of heading, I guess cutting across diagonally um, the roofs to try to get additional distance. So we'll say that you've basically effectively covered um, close to twice the distance, almost almost 50 feet because, you know, to where you think they are because you're going diagonally. Whatever the calculation is for the hypotenuse, I can't do that in my head. Okay. You're, you're, you're making better speed that way. So good, that's really cool. Yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome, that is your turn. Um, yep. It is now, which guy? This one's turn. Okay. Um, this one um, looks around and he um, is carrying a, um, looks like a small, almost miniature, you would say, crossbow. Um, he moves over here. Um, Elvin, I'm going to give you an attack of opportunity next Okay. Uh, is he wounded? Is it the one that is wounded? Uh, it is the one. That's the one. Wait a minute. Sorry. Uh, no, the uh, one that was wounded is one that. Um... Damn. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta put this down. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, okay. Uh, no, the one that's wounded is the one uh, on the top. Okay. Do I get, uh, I have my two swords uh, drawn, so do I get a double attack or just uh, No, because your other attack save, I'm pretty sure it's a bonus action attack, so it would only be one. Okay. So that's just eight. Uh, eight. An eight to hit. Uh, yeah, no, so you, he, you, you swing at him and he, he dodges out of the way. Okay. Um, and he takes a shot. Um, at Curtis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a that's a very brave shot to take between the hostages and his companion. <laughs> yeah, he, so he, he, I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give you cover for that as a matter of fact. Um, which, ooh, I said plus three or plus five. Very ballsy. Yeah, yeah, and we'll see if he gets a critical miss. We'll see what happens. Um, he's not so worried about the hostages. Um, <laughs> sorry. Anybody know um, what uh, half cover is? Is it plus three or plus five? Uh, plus two, I think. Half cover is two, three, fourth, uh, three, three quarters. Three, is three fourth, well, so three quarters is five, yeah. Three quarters is five. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna give him half cover, but there's there is a ch I, I take your point. There's a chance um, something bad could happen here <laughs> for him, not for me. Um, so let's see what happens. Okay. Um, so that's gonna be a plus two on your AC, basically, right? Yeah, I have fourteen right okay. now. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have any more wild chips. Oh, you don't. That's what's going on. That's yeah. Cool. Well, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, no rest. <laughs> um, 
Oh. Uh, 17, 16, 15. Your arm class is 14? Yeah, 14 plus 2, so 16. So that uh, hits. He hits you, unfortunately. And it wasn't yeah, that's fine. 6, huh? Yikes. Nice shot. Yeah. Okay, that's his action. Um, and this next one um, takes a swing at Alvin. Um, Jeez, I keep getting like really good hit rolls, but uh, only one damage. <laughs> wow. It's just a flesh wound on my. That is actually a flesh wound. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's exactly what I said. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, whose turn is it? Mine? Molly's no, turn. it's uh, Molly's. Molly. Molly's turn. Okay. So, I guess. I will stay here and I will do the same action. Nothing special. I will cost a firebolt here. Okay. And you recall the firebolt was not as effective as other things, or maybe. Only yeah, I know, but <laughs> oh no. I yeah. need to reload the game. I press the wrong the uh, very right bottom. Uh, you don't have any spare yeah. slots by chance? <laughs> Everybody's really green. <laughs> wait, wait a moment. It's. Uh, why it load one of my games? Sorry, give me a second. Take your time, take your time, take your time. It's so weird. No, I don't know why it went to my Shadowrun game. Okay, well, uh, let's launch. Until what time do people have today, by the way? Oh, I'm good. Um, until six o'clock, I'm fine. Oh, yeah, six o'clock is good. Okay. Uh, okay, it's loading. So yeah, I know that the firebolt is not very effective, but uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, Check. I don't think I have anything else. Uh, you have social spells, huh? Yeah, I'm mostly. I don't have many combat spells. The few I have are fire. Yeah, that's my problem so, as well. I don't really. <laughs> I'm not really good with combat spells. Andrea okay. will remember the moment where I hesitated when he was explaining to me what character he was going to play, and I said, oh, oh, there might be a problem, but we'll work it Yeah, work. but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's not a problem. I can do other I things. Um, yeah, so that's it. Ah, hi, it. And I guess it's half of that damn damage. Okay. He is, um, uh, it does hit him, and he does uh, seem like he uh, resisted some, but he is still badly hurt. Um, it looks quite. He looks quite singed. Okay. Just as a question, I guess here, I suppose I'm in cover. Is that right? That's why I moved yeah, myself you've got, here. Yeah, you've got. You've got. Uh, oh yeah, I'll give you three quarters cover there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um. Okay. That is your turn. Anything else, Molly? No. Okay. Not for now. Elvin, it's your turn. The one above you to the to your left and up is uh, quite injured. The other two are uninjured. Yep. Um, this one, by the way, this this uh, young one is uh, um, is moving over here and trying to uh, whoops, reverse these is is trying to um, help the uh, the older woman that's falling. Okay, so I I'm going to step back one, two. If, I, if you I, do I, that, just so you know, that will that will trigger attacks of opportunity from both of them against you. But uh, unless uh, you do the disengage, you can use a disengage action. No, but if I'm moving as a diagonal, uh, I am um, triggering the. Yes, you would still trigger because you're moving outside of their strike range. Okay, so I take a swing at the guy who is uh, hurt. Okay, you could you could use disengage um, the disengage action to do that, and you would still have a bonus action to do one attack. Um, I don't. You know, with your with your, with your offhand, can you do that? Didn't you cast the first strike? Yeah, I'm going to do the first strike. Yeah. Oh, you didn't do it? Oh, I see. No, not yet. Okay, let's go. Let's go for it. It's the white short sword. Uh, short sword. Yes, it's a five. I'm doing five piercing damage, probably on the guy. Oh, I see. That was your swing. Yep, you you sure do. And he goes. This is on the top guy, the injured one. Yeah. Yep. 
he goes down in a pool of blood. Good. Um, you Excellent. have your bonus action, which you can use for, for a second swing on the other one if you want, or you could. Yeah. You can you you don't have the ability to do, to do disengage with the bonus action. I don't think. Do you? Uh, what I could do is maybe parry. Maybe I could parry. You could uh, as a bonus action. The only thing you could do that we, you, there's a dodge action, but I don't think that's a bonus action. I think it's a, no. it's a full action. So okay, so I will take another swing at him. Yeah, I think that's unfortunately all you have. Okay. Anyway, we don't cover ourselves with glory if we don't fight. Wow, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I go yes. five. Um, in your face. Yep. And you were <laughs> you have the two weapon uh, feats so that you do use your uh, your 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 uh, dexterity bonus for your weapon damage on the. On the bonus action, right? I, I'm pretty sure you do. I think that's part of your. Um, really? I think so. Um, so my dexterity bonus is probably free. Let me see. Dexterity. Uh, it's a it's a five five bonus. I have a five bonus on dexterity. You have five bonus. On dexterity. How do you? No, three bonus on dexterity, right? Really? Three. I uh, have this. Two, uh, yes, sorry. Three. <coughs> you have this Colossus Slayer. Does that help you? I have what? Sorry. Uh, I think it would help you on the injured one. Colossus Slayer, right? You have that feat. The Colossus. Slayer. Yes, but uh, yes, but uh, it needs to be injured uh, to. Yeah. Okay. So the other one you really took down. This one is, uh, is injured, and then. So I, I won't look at it now, but I'm pretty sure you have the feat that allows you to add your dexterity on your bonus action attack. Okay, so you do five. Um, so it's a solid hit. You hit him uh, squarely in his shoulder, and he's, you know, it, you can see the gash opening. Yes. Flesh. I hope some of the blood is uh, uh, spraying on my face. <laughs> yes, sure. It's spraying on your face. <laughs> I mean, that's more heroic. <laughs> um, okay, that is love. And so it's now Furbus. Mm hmm. Furbus is going to sidestep. And now he has clear vision yep. of this dude, correct? Yep. Great. Uh, you've seen him do this before. He's going to wipe his forehead <laughs> and uh, fling his index finger at that um, nice. dude over there and cast Ice Knife. Ooh. Um, and that's going to hurt them, hopefully. Well, only this guy, luckily, he moved away. Which means that they are fine. Yeah. Um, and I have a macro for this. Let's see if it actually works. Boom. It worked. Okay. So 19 plus, wow, I wrote a 19. So 24 to hit. Yep. Uh, he takes 8 points of piercing and an extra 6 ice damage. So 14 total. He goes down with an icicle sticking out of his eye. Right. And as a free action, I just tell the other guy who Alvin is slicing and dicing, like, are you still sure you want to fight, Sonny? And that's okay. it. And it is actually his turn. He looks and <laughs> sees the one that just took a sword uh, behind Elvin that was cut down and the one, his other friend that just took the icicle in the face, Yep. he turns and bolts. Um, Elvin, you have an attack of opportunity. Uh, I'm going to enjoy so much. <laughs> yeah, I guess he, is, he wants uh, to die. He's wounded. Yeah, okay. Take this. How much? Ouch. Eight, eight piercing. But that's a 23 <laughs> Plus my uh, Colossus uh, bonus. Yeah. Is your Colossus bonus a roll or is it a flat addition? How does that work? It's a 1d8 so yeah, roll extra addition. damage. So let me roll for a 1d8 extra damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Five. That's a 13 total. You hit him in the injured shoulder that was that was uh, already bleeding. Yes. You sever his arm. Ah. 
and you yes. drop down, bleeding out. Yes. Well, good thing we have a, a sewer here, so the blood will just flow in there. Right, and then the blood yes. will start trickling down. So I think he's over 20 damage now. Yeah, he's gone. He's, he's, he's yes, gone. yes. You've done ah. it. Wow, I am very glad you nobody died. Um, <sighs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> and, uh, and we rescued the nymph and the old lady. I do want to go quickly um, to um, Eleanor, who's in the middle of a pursuit. Yep. Um, Eleanor, um, uh, so they are, at your best estimate, around, um, oh, let's see, they would have taken a movement too, but they're not moving that quickly as far as you know. So, you know, they're maybe 120 odd feet in front of you. Um, uh, but you don't have sight of them. You don't, you don't see them at this point. Um, so you're sort of faced with a choice. You can go flat out and in a couple of rounds, you think you will be able to catch up to where you think they would be. Um, but you would not be able to do that stealthily, or you can continue stealthily and just hope that you sort of pick up their trail, um, as you go across the rooftops and that you might be able to catch them, you know, if things just happen to work out. Well, for now, like at least this turn, I, I won't be able to be right on top of them because I'm still jumping on top of the houses. So basically, what I'm going to do is this turn, I'm going to move normally because I know where they're heading and they are not moving fast, just as you said. So I'm just heading in the direction where I could basically look from the nearest uh, rooftop to like on like right above them. So until I reach there, uh, I, I can move normally and probably next turn when I actually like I'm almost on top of them as I think uh, according to the speeds you were moving before and uh, during that time I will move still so this turn I'll just keep jumping on top of the roofs normally so so again what, what yeah I think I, I think I understand but I don't know 100% understand so let me let me um, lay out the options again and then so I can understand which which you're choosing so um if you want to be able to be within visual range of where you think they are by your next turn, you would have to do the dash action this turn. You would have to use both your your action and your um, movement to, to run full speed. And then you would also have to run for at least your movement the same speed next turn in order to get cover that distance quickly to catch up to them. Um, so you could do that if you want to catch up with them within your next turn to see where they are, if they're still there, which you don't know, um, but to do that, you would not be able to do that stealthily. Um, if you want to keep doing stealthily, it's going to take you more than two turns to keep, catch up with them. You do think if they're still moving at the relatively slow speed they were before, you'll still catch them, you'll still catch up with them, but it will take you probably um, three turns to catch up with them if you do it that way, stealthily. Yeah, I don't mind. The thing I'm doing, like basically I'm just moving at my normal speed for now. I'm not dashing or anything, but I still can use my second story work to add just a plus to my movement that I'm making. So according to exactly like you said, the speed and all that, they should be within 50 feet from my current location. So, so basically, basically I'm gonna I'm gonna move normal like with my normal movement, but without using any dash or anything. But also because I'm jumping, I'm also gonna use my <laughs> second story work to increase the distance to 28 feet. So actually, according to my calculation, I might be able to be on top of them next turn. Okay, so n no, um, you, if you do that, what you describe, you won't be up the next turn. It would take you three turns. Okay, um, I, I, I'm not, I don't know their speed, so okay. Yep, um, so that's, that's what I'm saying. So if you, um, I'm, I'm giving you the options. So if you want to be up with them within, the, within your next turn, then there's no way you can do that stealthily. Um, your, your second story work means that you're not on difficult terrain up on the rooftop, so you can move your full 25 feet. If you want to do a jump, that's the jump action instead of your movement, um, and you won't cover quite as much distance that way as you would just regular your regular movement. But you, it's not difficult terrain for you, which it, it would for most people. Most people up on the rooftops, it would be difficult terrain that they could only move half their movement. But for you, you can move your full movement, your full 25 feet at regular movement. If you want to do it stealthily, um, it, it it should be slower, but you know, you can, uh, you, you're, you're a stealthy guy. I'm not that worried about it, but it's still just not going to be fast enough because they were, they were fair, fair distance ahead of you. Um, you're going to have to really run to dash to catch up with them to, to see where they are without risk of them moving, you know, around a corner. 
And even then you just don't know where they are. They're out of sight. I'm not pressuring you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you, you should, you should, you should run. I, I totally get the sneak thing. If you want to do that, it's totally fine. You still may catch up with them, but they're, they're further ahead, I think, than you're, than you're, uh, you're picturing. So it's, yeah, it's yeah, really okay. a choice. I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it in three turns. There is no problem. Yeah. That. Okay. Keep what, what I was, yeah. What I was just uh, asking about is that because I can story works basically work like make a running jump. So so what happens is like as far as I remember, yeah, you can move a bit first and then make that running jump. It's not like your whole action will be that running jump. No, no. The, but a running jump is an action. A, a, a long jump is an action, and you get a, you get to add your dexterity to extend the, the distance of a jump. So you can jump further than those people. Okay, but so that's I an guess. action, not an addition. And you can also do your movement action. So you could do you could do your movement action and a jump. That's what um, I'm talking about. Yeah. You could do that. So that's two things. But you could that's also just use your your movement action and your dash action. It's that, the same that, thing. You just you get farther with your dash action. So you could do that. I mean, you could you could you could, it's it's just how much distance you can travel in, in both using both your movement and your action. So absolutely. Um, so so I, I can move normally and then use second story work to make a running jump to cover more distance. Is this okay or not? It, it, that's it, my question. It, it, is, it, is, it is fine. I'm just saying that it's it's not as much as, as distance you would cover if you use your full dash action and your movement. That's all. Because then you get uh, Okay, okay, fine. Let's let's cover more ground and just keep going. Okay. Okay. So you've gone I so you so you do your regular movement 25 feet and then you do a jump and you get another like 13 feet on top of that. I guess so. You've done. I think that's right. I, I, I got to check after after this game how much you get on a long jump. But let's just say for argument's sake, it's ten feet uh, plus your dexterity, which I think is plus three, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's ten plus three. Yes. So okay. So twenty five, thirty five. So you know, we've gone we've gone around forty feet or so um, up on the roof. So you're not quite. You can see ahead of you um, where where uh, you know the roofs are are um, going back down to the streets. Okay, I'm getting close. Yep. Okay. Um, so you are continuing the pursuit, and we will go back to the action on the street. And we are now out of combat, so I will turn off the uh, turn track. And what do you guys do? Um, I don't think it's appropriate to search for bodies, so we will go on the. I will go on the talk to uh, the the. Um, you said it's a nymph. Yes, this is a nymph, and the other ones are a uh, fearbolg. A what? Sorry. A uh, fearbolg. They're kind of like a kind of like They're a kind giant. of uh, Ireland giants, basically. Okay, so uh, the nymph is probably the less injured, if I understood she, well. She does not appear to be injured, but she seems okay. she's trying to tend to the the fur bulb and is okay. looks very so. Very uh, I, I, I go to them concerned. Uh, are you okay? Or what what happened with those and she says, evil uh, people? They, they attacked us. They're 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 the street gangs. They're 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 everywhere. Uh, they, they, they keep doing this. They're they're robbing people. They're killing people. They're 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 taking people away. We never see them again. My my friend, she's really hurt. We need to get her to the doctor. Okay. Uh, do you know a doctor we can take her to? There's there's a doctor in the city center. Uh, there there is a doctor there. There's there's a hospital. Okay. Let's take care of her. Okay. So you help with uh, carrying the uh, the friend, I guess. Yeah, I'm turning to a service. Mm -hmm. uh, come on, be useful. Well, if you put it that way, it's going to be like, I think you got this, Shani. Pets you on the shoulder and uh, <laughs> goes that way. <laughs> no problem. Okay, okay. so, so I, uh, uh, I carry those... Uh, I have carrying those uh, those people. I'm gonna move us back to the um, the street map here. Okay. Um. Okay. So, um, basically, all of this happened. Um, I don't know exactly. That's sort of been here. Okay. Sort of down in here. Can you guys see this? Yeah. 
<clears throat> I can't see it. Okay. So, um, the guys turned up this way. The guys you were chasing. Um, Eleanor is sort of trying to get cut him across this way. And um, you guys are here. The city center. Um, is whoops, didn't show up. Sorry, I'm wrong thing here. Is there? Um, so, um, in other words, it's sort of in the same direction as as um, uh, the guys were disappearing, at least from where you are now. Or you could try, I guess, to do a shortcut. But basically. The, the best way to get there would just be to continue um, along the same path this way to the city center. The city center is this one, right? Yep, that's the city center. Okay. But I saw them going right, so they are actually going the opposite direction. They have turned up that way, yeah. Well, so basically, I'm just following them, and everybody's following me. This how it goes, except uh, you're, of course. You're, uh, yeah, uh, you're a fair way ahead at this point. You're, you know, you you are getting close to being at that intersection. Sort of, uh, very soon, you'll be sort of when you finish getting there, you'll be over here, and then you'll be able to see that street and see if they if you can see them. Um, Okay. And they're 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 now sort of out, out of combat, so you know, and, and you sort of are too. So, you know, we'll just see what everyone's doing, and then we'll we'll accelerate time and get you there and see what you see. We don't need to roll turns anymore. Okay, so it's up to up to you're everybody still, else. You're chasing them. So so um right now, uh, Molly, what are you doing? Sorry, I was muted. So I just want to close by to Eleanor. I want to reach her. Okay, you actually can't see her. I don't think she's so, up on top of the roofs, and she's moving, you know, relatively stealthily. Um, I see. I see. I, I brought you a message. Probably you didn't realize. Oh, it is. I'm terrible. Oh, at that. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, so I have no idea where is she. Was this something meaning... that you were doing earlier that I should have known that changes things? Yeah, I did it uh, while we were in the other map, but uh, immediately after the combat. Okay. But maybe what what you saw then, just for explain. So you you would have seen um, Eleanor's character um, scramble up at in the, at a very fast speed the wall of a of a house um, about twenty feet up in the, you know up in the air to the roof, and then get you know uh, reach the roof and then take off diagonally and sort of disappearing from sight up above. Um, so, like, but you know, you what, know what direction she's going, basically. Yeah. So I want to run in that direction. I don't want to leave her alone. Gotcha. Okay. So that would mean basically you're running um, down that road. Um, yeah. Of course, I don't climb walls. I yeah. follow the road. Okay. So you're running along that direction, basically. And yes. I guess are you running quickly to try to catch up? Uh, definitely. Okay. So you're going as fast as you can. Yeah. No stealth involved. That's totally fine. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And um, so Fergus and Elvin, you are walking together with the injured Gerbog and the nymph um, trailing behind, or I guess uh, leading you toward down the street towards the city center because you've never been there. Is that right? Yeah. I'm, I'm checking Molly. Okay. So you see Molly running, booking down the street in front of you, um, and you sort of, you know, get what she's doing. Um, you <laughs> try to run after well, her in your old man away. Or... Yeah, I'm trying to run after okay. her. Okay, great. So you book after her, and uh, you're leaving uh, Elvin behind to take care of the her book. Yep. Okay. So you're both, both guys. So you are, you know, you're a little ways behind Molly, but not that far behind. Um, and uh, okay, so 
Um, Eleanor, you make it to that spot in green at the corner. Um, roll me a perception check. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. Um, you see um, them turning. Oh, one of the guys. They probably. You figure it's probably Booth turning this way, gliding down this little side street. Yeah. Uh, which way? Uh, you see here. Does that show up? Am I the wrong layer? I'm in the wrong layer. That's why. Man, this probably showing up <laughs> this way. Uh, that's too big. Okay. But that, that direction. Okay, so they are going this way. Okay. <laughs> I just realized I was doing all of my arrows and drawing in the GM layer. That's why you guys were really silent when I said this one. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, nobody's saying anything. I was okay. imagining it. Yeah, 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 sorry. Okay. Um, I am now yeah. on the right layer. Okay, so... Yeah. So basically, is, basically, I, I, yeah. I am here on top of this you're, roof. You're, and yeah. I saw them around here turning that left. Yes, exactly. Okay. And okay. everybody else is sort of going in this direction. Um, uh, Elvin's heading towards the city center here, and uh, everyone else is trying to catch up with you on your right. But okay. there's still a ways behind you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to keep following them. So I okay. will be on top of this. Now. Okay. Do you want to? So you could try to make the leap across from the building where you are to the building across, um, or you could climb down and go on the street, or you could keep going sort of along this way. I guess you have three choices. Uh, well, I, I think I'm gonna lead to the nearest one here first, and then just because this is right next to it, I can go easily from here yep. to here. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna leap to, to the next building, which is closer over okay. there, um, and then go yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, so how what do you want me? Hmm. I want to know how a long jump works. Actually, I've never used that rule. How does a long jump work? Do you have to roll for it? Or you just, you just no. You it just. It? I think I just jump. Just jump, and it's uh, ten plus feet plus your dexterity. No, no, sorry. Dexterity. Yeah. Well, for you, you can add your your dex modifier, but usually it's your strength score. So it's ah, not your modifier; it's your score. So if you have yeah. ten. Okay. Strength, yeah. you can jump 10 feet, plus you can add your your dex let modifier. Me, uh, let me figure uh, out how far this is. Uh, so you, you would be able to judge the distance for your jump, so you're not going to go plummeting. You can make the decision not to do it if it's too far. But I think, um, let's see. Um, so, the, you know, these are fairly narrow streets, so it's not... Um, it's not super far between the buildings, but it's it's going to be farther than 10 feet. They're bigger than 10 feet apart. So the question is, is it 14 feet apart or is it 20 feet apart? So I'm going to let you roll a, um, uh, a D20 and a 1 to 10 means that you could, it's it's short enough distance that you could make it within 14 feet. If it's, if it's above a 10, um, it's going to be, you know, more than 15 feet. It's going to be like 20 feet. It's a six. Six, you can make it. Okay. Thank you. Now um, I'm on this rooftop. And um, so I'm you've got sure. one yeah. more uh, movement action so you could move up to. So I'm gonna, okay. So I, I will be on that rooftop so I can be right above them. So you're going to go in this direction? Yep. Okay. So you go in that direction. You're not quite up there to where you can see me yet, but you, you figure they're, they're somewhere in there. Okay. Um, everyone else is moving. Um, Molly and Fervis, you sort of make it to, let's say, this corner here at this point. And hmm. uh, Elvin is still okay. back um, with moving a little slower with the injured earlier. Um, okay. So um, back to Doran, uh, I guess, will you go up to this corner? Where do you want to go now? You're, you're, you're close um, to see where they are. You, you know they were heading down this road. Um, so you, they're probably not right on this corner yet, unless they were sort of waiting there and they were trying to set up an ambush. Um, otherwise, they 
probably even here somewhere. Just a remark, I'm, I'm not Dory in this campaign, but okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Dory. <Doreen. That's... laughs> uh, so, so they are turning uh, right here around this corner. You don't know, you haven't gotten to the race and see them yet, but you could you could make it easily to this corner. Uh, let me, can I clear all this? Like from, from the top of this building, do, do I see them in this street? Make it rid of some of this because it's because too much stuff here. Okay. okay. Sorry, give me one second here. Okay. Okay. So um so you are basically at this moment, um you are basically I'm here. Yeah, you're yeah, sort of there. So okay. you can you can look over the lip now of this street if you want to see where they are. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So you see, and they are um you know basically can you see? Right there, there, there. Yeah, you sort of see them, I guess, uh, at this point turning this corner. But you have enough movement, you could catch up there, you could get to this corner top at the same time and sort of follow where where they're going. Sure. So you go uh, over there? Yep. Okay. So I will be here now. Okay. So you're sort of going around the corner tops. Uh, Molly and um, and Furbis are are now sort of going up this street, I suppose. Um, maybe you're, they're not entirely sure where you are at this point. Now they see an empty street. Um, you see them, um, uh, Eleanor, turn that way. Okay. So you're gonna keep following them? Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on this building then. Okay. So basically you've keep following them. Um I I I don't really see any way for for Molly and Fervis to, to sort of be able to figure out where you are at this point yeah. because you're being stealthy. So I think you've sort of lost him. You could have the choice of either trying to figure out where he is by, you know, taking a guess, or you could turn around and head back to catch up with um I just I turn around to Fergus and say, "Oh no, I lost her." Yeah, well, me too. We should have had a rest. I could have turned into a wolf and, you know, smelt him out. But now I'm too tired. I, I don't know where they went. Uh, well, what should we do? What you reckon? Well, I look around and see if the help is anywhere near. Master, Jim, what, I look that? around to see if the if the elf, Gilles, yeah. is anywhere around. Um, he's, so if you sort of go back to the corner where, where you turned up, he's he's just getting sort of at that corner now. And I see. Getting, the nymph is leading them towards the, the city center further down that road. I'm so throwing at them. I'm throwing at them for not helping the poor. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, so this, I this, this, female, uh, this female fur fur bulb is, is still like you know uh, almost seven feet tall and, and weighs a lot and is is you know unconscious so you're barely you know able to, yeah. to pull her along. <laughs> Be its character. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's your strength actually? I'm not very strong at <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> You're making it like you know four feet at a time, and then you sort of collapses on top of you. And the I'm like on, uh, eight on, strength. On. I'm eight strength. What? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you guys see, you guys see Elvin sort of, you know, collapsed underneath this this fur ball that he was trying to lift and is now fully fallen, thrown on the street, trying struggling, trying to get her up off of him. Off of him. And I try to per I, up and down. I try pretending I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well actually I'm a doctor. I could probably try to figure out what's wrong with a furborg. Could I uh, roll a good, good idea. check? Okay. Um, I'm not I'm not really proficient in it, but I can try. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna head it back over to them. Let's let's go back to um do, I, just, I keep saying Doran to Eleanor quickly. Um, I mean, we don't know where Eleanor is, so it's like, meh. Yeah. 
Um, Eleanor, you see them, so you're, I guess you're going sort of around this way and staying on top of the rooftops? Yep. Okay. Um, you see though, as, as you're sort of turning that corner, um, you see them go into this building through a door. Does the building have any windows? Not from where you, where you can see where you are. It's, it's lower down. They're on the, they're on the ground floor. Okay. I'm on top of that building and now I can look for windows. Um, all right, so down below, it's it's a lower sort of um, the, the buildings you see are sort of very run down um, houses, it's like a row of, of really kind of dilapidated houses, one story houses. Um, there are some windows, but they're they're below you. You're higher up above them, so you can't see down into it. Okay, that's not a problem for me. So I'm um, uh, basically I'm gonna attach the rope uh, in the rooftop, and yep. I will go down to the nearest window where I suppose that I will be able to see what's going on inside from. Yep. And I will sneak a beak through the window. Sure. Are you gonna do that stealthily? Uh, yeah. Okay. Give me a stealth check. Okay. Oh, okay. Ouch. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh wait, you're a halfling, don't you? Do you have the ability to reroll that one? Is it a one? Sorry, it's a six, right? Where, where uh, do you see it's a one? Modifier, it's a natural one, so you get an eleven. Actually. Oh, okay, yes, and I rerolled that. Yeah. I just don't know how you guys are figure out it's a one. Because well, it's red. You, you your, so. uh, okay, okay. So I'm gonna roll it. Yeah. You, it automatically rolled already. It's an it's eleven. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Okay, because this thing says uh, plus. Five. Ah, that's why it's a one. Okay, I get it. Exactly. Exactly. So you get an eleven. Um, so okay. So it's you know it's sort of average. Um, all right. So you, there there is a window. Um, it's it's not. There's no glass in it. Just sort of like an an emptied out frame. Um, I wonder if I will picture this. Uh, no, I think everybody. Right. Anyway, I just have to imagine it. So old dilapidated house. Um, you look through the window. Inside, um, it's dim. Um, right now, it's already around. Um, it, it's it's early evening. It's around 8 p.m. already, um, and uh, it's very dim inside. But you do see um, uh, uh, some figures in there. Um, I guess how how long are you looking through the window? Are you, is this like a peek, or are you really are you really investigating what's inside? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking carefully inside, basically, to see as much as possible. Okay. Um, so you're looking in through the window, and uh, you see inside um, uh, what um, you realize is a tiefling. Um, and you get the sense that there is... Actually, give me a perception check. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm not good as a person. Okay, so you see this one. You see this one because it's right by the um, right by the window. So um, and it, and the horns make it obvious that it's, that it's a tiefling. Um, you don't know what else or who else is in there, um, and. As you're looking through it, the tiefling turns and catches your eye with his eye. So he's clearly seen you. Oh, I thought it was night, like basically, okay, I'm not sure, but okay. His, his, his perception check beats your stuff. I mean, okay. he has dark vision, you don't. Okay, fine. So it's time to run, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but anything, I, I don't see anything except like there is a tiefling. Like, what about the room itself? Like, is it lit up or is it dark inside? It, it's it's pretty dark inside. It's really all you could tell is it's like really run down. Um, but you you basically with a roll of three, you, you didn't get a very good look inside at, at the stage. You could stay there and keep looking in and and take take a further look inside. Um, and but this guy has seen you, so that's that's your decision. Okay, so I don't think like he clearly saw my face because uh, according to it's dark inside and outside. Yeah, he well, might depends. have dark vision, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, it depends on what kind of vision he is. So, so you're, yeah. you're not sure, but you, his his eyes met your eyes, so you saw him. Yeah. And okay. you're pretty sure he saw you. 
Okay, but the thing is, uh, I was only like leaning, uh, you know, sideways. So basically, he only saw my forehead and my eyes, but he didn't see his com my complete face either way. He'd be probably, yeah, so, you're right. You're, you would have been blocked by the wall because you were looking yeah. through the window. So he doesn't see your full body, but he's yeah. he's seen your he's seen your face. Yeah, he, he knows that somebody's out there. So I'm just going to climb uh, up uh, with my rope again and just uh, jump away from this rope building back to where I left my friends last time I saw them. Because I don't know that they went to the citizen area. So basically, you're going to sort of back up this way and then... So, so just to mark the building, is it this building? I'm just going to mark it. So... Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go the same way I I went until I arrive at where they were fighting. Okay, so you're sort of going back like that. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, good. That was fun. Um excellent. Um cool, so you get back and um I don't know what Molly and Fervis are doing, but um you're sort of I think you're all sort of congregated now at this spot. I know Fervis is about to do a medicine check, right? Yeah. Okay. Both I just look the, then. Yeah, mm -hmm. both on on the furball lady and Elvin. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? What are you trying to do? First of all, to see what the problem is with the, the furball, or what are you? Yeah, see what the problem. Like why? So you said the furball lady. Uh, it's, she was like older, right? But she was yeah. unconscious. It's pretty clear. You don't even really need to roll. She's bleeding from the head. Oh, so boy! Yes. Okay, I tear some of my robe i guess uh i tear off because i don't have bandages i'm trying to make some bandages and try to you know uh as much as possible uh try to make the bleeding stop if that's a thing uh -huh. um, um so hold on a second i think there's I think in the game system is except there is something like this for the Pathfinder. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, skill? unfortunately, I didn't pick up the healing or the healer's kit or whatever. That yeah. been... So you can do it. Look, you can do basic first aid. You're not, you know, if this was like a, a, a PC or extra combat, you wouldn't be actually healing hit points. But you okay. can, you know, you can do basic first aid. And, you know, so to the extent that basic first aid would um, help somebody with a head, head injury. Normally, it's that kind of effect. If it's a serious head injury, you know, putting bandages is not going to. Uh, okay, and it is a serious head injury, I suppose. It's you know, it, it, she's she's an older person. Um, she's bleeding. It does. You don't you don't see brain matter. Um, okay. It was enough to knock her unconscious. Uh, well, still, I would like to try my best to maybe yeah. stabilize. Sure. Uh, I have two berries left. Yeah, well, you that would be useful. Berry. So I, I, I put a one berry in her mouth. Okay, you can do that, and um, that seems to help. She, um, she seems to stir after a moment. Um, her eyes flutter, and uh, she starts to come to, and she's she's really groggy. Um, but but um, you could tell that that definitely helped her. The 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 nymph, the young nymph, by the way, is saying the hospital's right here. It's just around the corner. We can we can just, we can just get a little further. I know you can do it. You're a strong man. You're you're my hero for saving me. Thank you so much. You are such a hero. Talking to Elvin. What's her charisma? What's her charisma? Yes. Uh, off the roof, off the charts. <laughs> it's <laughs> a name. <laughs> Okay, she's like a 22. Uh, no, uh, hold on a second. I'll tell you. But give me a second here. Uh, oh, I could go back to that. Uh, but it's, it's, um, it's pretty good. What was that? I did here. No, it's this. No. Oh, that's a good picture. Okay, wait. Okay, we can do it. Uh, oh, you know, I can just do it this way. I, there are things about Roll20 that I like. I like the uh, compendium. And 
because you're like, oh, actually, it's not it's not all that high for this particular one. Um, but you know, she's 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 uh, let's say let's say she's she's quite attractive, but maybe she hasn't fully um, developed into her full potential. She's still she's still fairly young. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so I say no problem. No, no. We what? Uh, so let's take your friend, uh, your your friend to the doctor. Okay. So um, do and, and uh, Eleanor, you you catch up at this point, and so you're all together again. So oh, there you point. are. Where have you been? I was following these guys from the airport, and I found out their hideout. But oh, I had job. to leave before they discovered me. I just seen you. Uh oh, but good job. Yeah, uh, later we can all raid that place. Yeah, let's try to disappear in the hospital then. Yeah, they, they haven't totally seen my whole face, so probably they can't recognize me, but they know that they were watching. Like somebody was watching, so I'm afraid that if we don't go back really fast, they might actually change or switch places or move to another place. That's true. But we need to treat uh, these guys, these girls, these ones first anyways. So yeah, we're going to the hospital, I guess. Agreed. To the hospital. Elvin, you got <laughs> this. I have faith in you. Uh, I wouldn't mind some help. I'm uh, suffering here. With okay. Guy. I'll touch your shoulder and give you guidance. You got this. Okay. Roll with a D4. Athletics. Well, I don't know. Uh, D4. You roll, no? You roll. Huh? Do you want me to roll for your athletics? Yes, I'm busy. I'm a little ah, athletic. Sorry, uh, where is my athletics? I should be all right in athletics. And add a d4. No, I thought the d4 was for you. Just oh, no. athletics. This is... Oh my god. Okay. Oh, see. Oh. Ellen as yeah. as feels yeah. uh, empowered by the cheering on of the uh, of the young men. Yeah. Go ahead and roll the uh, go ahead and roll the uh, additional d4 on top of it. Just for fun. We've got enough. Nature guides oh, you, my friend. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, uh, okay I can roll the D4 for you, just for fun. Yeah. yeah. You uh, thanks a lot. You got this. It's probably actually what you needed. Um, <laughs> so you managed to uh, to somehow find it within you to uh, to lift this woman up plus she's she's now semi-conscious so she's able to help a little bit herself and you stagger down um the rest of the way which is another block or so to the city center and move you guys to the city center Let's go. I hope this works i haven't looked at this map in a while oh it looks like a city center it works. Okay. Okay. Um, so over, oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Over here, you notice um, in front of this building, this building looks like it used to be perhaps um, a grand hotel at some point centuries ago. Um, it's now quite run down. And in front of it um, are a bunch of tents that have been set up. And uh, you see people. Um, moving in and out of the door to the hotel and uh, um, you know, in and out of the tents that are in front of it. Um, other areas sort of over here, there are a couple of, uh, you know, of um, vendor stalls set up, um, but, but very few from what you would normally be accustomed to in a city center. Um, there are also milling about um, uh, a few, a number, uh, you know, straggler refugees here and there, uh, pockets of them. Um, Molly, give me a perception check. Sure. Oh, there I am. Perception. 15. Okay. Um, you're not sure what, 
Um, but um, something caught your attention over here um, in a group of refugees. Something, something seemed, yeah, somewhere over there, something just it, it caught your attention. You're not sure what, but, but something caught your eye, and you can't quite put your finger on it, but something caught your interest or your attention over there. Um, the nymph, in the meantime, is, is, is guiding you. You came in from uh, back to this. You came in from this direction. That's not From enough. here? Yeah, you're over okay. there. Um, and uh, the nymph is saying that the, uh, the hospital is, is this building here. And it's trying to yeah. guide you to the, to, the, uh, to the area in front. And she says, you know, this is, this is where, where everybody goes to get help. Well, I, I give a look to whoever is closest to me of the team. Let's assume it's Fergus. I give a look at him. And then I actually move myself close here okay. to better investigate. Yep. Okay. So you're going to go in that direction. Okay. Um, yes. Just, what are the rest of you doing? Just be careful. And I just go. Oh my God. Look, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these that's are big tiles. The scale turned on wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's not right. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I, I will fix that before the next time. But that's um, all right. Actually, I think you can resize them right now. You can that's... click on the icon and make it smaller. I, I think we can also use the group icon. The group one. Oh no, yeah. Because we're. Uh, yeah. Well, I can't. I can't because the scales too big. It snaps to the grid. So I can't actually make it smaller. It's okay. Nothing's going to happen out here. This is all theater of the mind out here. Um, I've got another map I'll move you to in a minute. Um, what is everybody else doing while giant Molly is heading down that way and everybody's screaming and running? <laughs> well, yeah. I, step, I, I step on everybody. You step on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a hospital, right? So either way we... Well, we need to carry the two girls here, right? Yep. Okay. Let me move. Um, I'm going to move everybody to the hospital one just so we all are on the same page so we can see what's going on. Um, but Molly, I'll, I'll treat you, uh, Theater of the Mind, separately as being apart from that. So you're over here. We'll, we'll get to you in one second. Let's move to the hospital. Um, okay. Tell me when you guys can see what's going on here. You all see the map? Still loading. Yes, Still loading. Yeah. I can see it. Okay. See the beginning, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll, well, it's loading for you guys. I'll move your. Oh, it's still too big. Let's no, just. Okay. Lenore. Okay. Let's see. Ah, okay. Ah, cheers. So, um, the hospital already. Okay, so in these tents, you see now that as you get closer, um, th every one of these tents out front is uh, filled with, um, or most of the most of the tents are filled with cots with with injured um, refugees on them, and they're all being treated, and there are. Um, nymphs that are running in and out, um, and a, a fur bulb that's running in and out of the, the building, um, carrying bandages and what looks like are probably medical supplies um, back and forth. And standing in front is a centaur um, who um, has a uh, white apron covering his upper half that is streaked in blood, and he's giving directions to the, uh, to the others, and he's moving from patient to patient, examining them. Um, let's pause here, actually. Let's go to, to Molly. Um, Molly, roll another perception check. Sure. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so you move closer to that area where where something had caught your eye, and as you get closer, you sort of uh, sort of move where where your line of sight reveals um, a street heading in, down that direction, and looking at you, um, peering at you, you see that family. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and the little boy with one leg is, is staring intently at you. Do you realize that this is what caught my attention? Yes, and you think that's what caught your attention. You realize it was, it was something about the color of the woman's blouse um, that the little girl had been tugging on before that, that caught your, uh, you know, it was the red of the color that caught your attention. You know those people, Molly? Did she, he follow me? Close to you now. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's moved further away. Oh, I, well, actually, I approached them this time. Okay. So they see you coming closer, and uh, the, um, the the little girl goes behind the mother's skirt, um, um, but they don't move, and the, they 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 watch you approach. Um, they don't seem, you know, um, I guess their expression of anything just strikes you as being haunted. Is the word? I see. Once I'm close enough. I raise my hand and say, hey, I really, I realize you were looking at me for a long time. Is there anything you want? And uh, the, uh, so, so the, the, the woman, um, uh, again, this is a, a, a tiefling family. Um, the woman says, uh, no, we, we, we saw you at uh, the, the nymph's rest. That's, that's Ian Mar's place. Um, we, we were worried to, to, to go there where there were all so many humans. Uh, so we, we just needed to wait. Uh, but you seemed so sad to me. So I thought maybe you could understand us. What's happening here? Well, we, we have come from our village far to the north. Uh, we've been fleeing for, for weeks. Two of my children didn't make it. Um, this one barely made it. Uh, the, doctor, the doctor helped him. Uh, but now we're, we're hoping to finally be able to rest. And the boy, uh, you know, has been staring intently the whole time, speaks up and says, uh, we're going to see Ian Meyer. And the, the woman sort of hushes him and says, uh, we, we are, we're, we're just trying to, to, to find a place to rest um, after what has been a horrible experience for us. And I don't know, somehow you seem like somebody who, uh, who could understand us. I, I don't know why. I, I smile at them, especially at the kids. They say, who is this Ilmar you were talking about? And he says, Ilmar, everybody knows Ilmar. He, he helps us. And uh, the woman says, hush, hush, lad. Uh, and then as she says, uh, Ilmar, he's, uh, he, he's, he's a good man. He's, he's uh, known uh, to, uh, to help people in need. Um, we were we were told to see him by Dr. Sotinos, and uh, we had, that's where we were on our way um, when when we saw you at the inn. Um, but then we saw there were there was trouble, so we were we were worried for you, and so we followed. I see. Well, that's very kind of you, and so. My pockets are 
gold coin. I'm not sure if they have the same value here. But they show it to him. And they say, seems you're having a, a troubled life. Why don't you buy something for yourself with this? They give it to him, to the kid. Oh, and his eyes light up and he says, Mama, may I? Can I? Can I? <laughs> he says, Mama, can I? She says, it's may I. <laughs> And says, yes, okay, go, go, see if you can find something at, at this. And then before he goes, I say, you are very lucky to have a nice mom like your own. And he just smiles and he runs off. And the mother says, so, oh, that was very kind of you. I look at the mother, now that the kid is not here, and I tell her, so what's really happening here? Well... Most of our kin, our relatives, uh, live in the south. Um, we were, uh, there, there's a, some distant relatives that, that live more in the north, and we, we had been there for some time. When the trouble started, uh, it's, it's, it's um, we don't understand what's happening, but we were in our village, and people started to disappear in the night and more and more started to disappear. And then monsters started to appear in our village uh, in the night. And then more and more came and there were horrible things. They had uh, sharp giant teeth and uh, had, I, I think they had wings. I, I don't know, I, I didn't stay to look. I ran and took my, my children with me and we, we ran through the woods and we heard horrible screaming in the village behind us and then the fire started and we just kept running and we found more families on the road as we traveled for many, many weeks and heard many stories. We, we, we understood that the place that is more safe is to the south. So we, we went there to, or tried to get here to see our relatives. We have to stop through Gawatch to, to get to where we're going. We tried to make it, we, we thought that we were close. And then just maybe two days or so, three days maybe outside of Gawatch at night, we were attacked. There was, I, I don't know what it was. It was giant, uh, a, a wolf, I think, some kind of a wolf, perhaps. It looked like a wolf, but it was huge. I, I, I was, it was bigger than the centaur. Uh, it was enormous, and its eyes were red, and she starts to weep a little bit, and she said, I I watched my children. I watched. I watched it kill my children, and it almost, it almost took my my other boy. It it took his leg, and somehow we made it here, and that was just a few days ago. Oh my I hope you. I hope you find your shelter here. You are a brave woman. Thank you. Uh, we, we should go. Uh, I need to find my boy and we need to find Ymir. If you ever need something, you know where to find me. The same place where you found me earlier. I would probably be staying there. And she just nods and gives sort of a weak smile and then turns and uh, heads towards where uh, where her boy w went to, uh, to a vendor cart to try to find something, a treat. And then I reach the team. That's it. Okay. So you go back around. In the meantime, um, cutting back to the rest of the team, you are um, at the tents, and this is what you see. So you see um, the centaur in front, um, and then uh, a nymph here, and um, coming out of the door is a uh, young furbolg. Fear, fear I always pronounce this incorrectly. Apparently it's pronounced fearbolg.
Can you all hear me? Are you there? Yep. I yep. hear some inter weird interference that I wasn't sure. Okay, good. Um, so the, um, you you know, uh, Elvin is, is helping the, uh, um, the Fearborg, the older Fearborg woman and, uh, you arrive here. Um, what do you do? Mm. I show my wants also to, uh, to somebody who looks, uh, uh, looks like, um, she or he has, uh, medical uh, knowledge sure so as you come up the uh the nymph here um at the top sees you and and immediately turns and, and helps and guides uh guides you to this cot over here and helps you lay down the uh the fur bold woman on on the cot um mm. and she starts to starts to examine him and uh examine her rather and um and shouts over to this other furball to, to bring bandages and clean water. Okay. Uh, the centaur then sees you and comes over and says, uh, um, what, what happened? Where, where, where did you find her? Is, is, is everything okay? Um, I don't know. I found those people uh, defenseless uh, being bullied by uh, three tiflings. Uh, and he... He shakes his head. Um, this is centaur um, looks uh, fairly young, um, not not you know a fully grown, but but not you know sort of a, a young adult. Um, mm -hmm. Looks uh, as far as centaurs goes, absolutely exhausted. Um, he's he's carry he's um, as I said he's wearing an apron with uh, but it has many pockets in it. He's got lots of vials and jars uh, sticking out of the pockets, um, many of which you notice are empty. Um, but he still has them in there. He's, um, uh, um, he, he looks very concerned by your story and he says, yeah, that's, um, the, the, uh, street gangs are, are taking over the city and taking advantage of the refugees that are coming through here. They seem to be operating, um, out of the, uh, mostly out of the northern gates where uh, where the refugees first arrive or in, at their most vulnerable. Um, this this happens a lot and uh, I thank you for, for for bringing this one here. We'll, we'll try to help her. Um, at this point, um, Molly comes up and has rejoined the group. Mm. By the way, I just realized Ferber still has a crossbow bolt sticking out of his chest. Yeah. <laughs> I think I forgot about that. Yeah. You all are fairly injured, I think. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Oh, hey, Molly. Okay. How was it? Hey. Have you tried any of the food trucks? Any of the street food? No. I just... <laughs> I need to change the room, sorry. One second. I, I just had a chat with some people. Neat. How's going here? Mm. Mm. I guess it's okay. This hospital seems to be very busy, but they do care of seems their that, people. Seems that this is a very troubled place. Yep. There are many fugitives that apparently lost their village to monsters. Oh, what monsters? Do you know more? Yeah, they were describing what looked to me like harpies or anyway, oh. flying creatures. And mm. then big wolves probably not wolves but looking like wolves big wolf you say yeah mm. don't they have any uh, government in this city nobody in charge do you ask that too um yeah they have reason here but he was also the guy who informed everybody about uh, their ship 
uh, being burned by the refugees. So I assume he doesn't have very good relations with these refugees, basically. Well, it looks like nothing is organized. Uh, we should try to find uh, somebody who wants to take uh, charge of uh, things. It looks a very, very uh, a chaotic situation. I'm very surprised. It doesn't go like that in my uh, hometown. Well, maybe there's no one who wants to take charge. Molly but... doesn't say anything. But she secretly thinks, ha, huh, privileged elf. <laughs> I, I, I felt that. I felt that. Uh, while, while you guys are at it, I also mentioned that uh, when I followed the guys from the Arabic, they actually entered into a place where I also saw a Tuthlin inside. So they might be cooperating and they might also be part of the same group who hurted the lady that we just brought to this hospital as well. Hmm, I see. So there might be a connection between them and the orbit, and maybe the monsters that Molly was talking about. You mentioned something with big teeth or something like that? Yeah. I think we can take some time to share the knowledge that we caught in the tavern between each other. Yeah, we need to rest. I'm a bit exhausted now. And we also need to, like, yeah, take a nap. Old man needs his app. Yep. Doctor, uh, the, the, the uh, Centaur doctor, um, by the way, who introduces himself, he says, again, thank you. My, my name is Sochinos. I, I do what I can here. I, I've, I have not been here for very long, but we've set up this hospital. I see that some of you look injured. Uh, may I quickly give you some some uh, healing? I, I can't do very much, but I can I can help you a little bit if you'll let me. If I by all the... means. First, said, well, I'm fine. I looks down and it's like, oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I could it's probably it. use a healing hand. Uh, okay. Let's try to help you. He, um, he says, follow me. And he, he heads inside. Yeah, Eleanor also wants wants some healing anyways. So Eleanor can follow as well. Yep, yep. And he's sort of inviting you all to, to come in. Um, give me one second. I will reveal. It's dark, yeah. Yeah, give me one second here. Oof. Okay. Oh. oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> oh, pretty nice. Okay. Let me move back to the PC room, <laughs> muting myself. He says, let's see. Uh, oh, and he calls back and he, he looks at the, uh, at, the, at the counter here, which is filled with, you know, bloody hatchets and saws. And he calls and says, you know, Brian, I told you, we've got to clean this up. Wash these in the pail. And uh, the furball comes in and starts dipping the uh, bloody instruments in this bloody water. And then the doctor um, moves you back into this room further. Um, so he, he, he talks to each one of you and says, um, let me see what I can do. And he, he, he pulls some vials out of his, uh, out of his jacket and says, um, you know, our medical supplies are, are quite scarce. We have, we have some still, but, uh, those, those, uh, thugs you were talking about, I, I think they were the ones we, a lot of our medical supplies went missing a few days ago. So now we're, we're, we are quite scarce here. Um, so I apologize. I, I can't do very much. Um, but, but I can do a little bit. Who, who is injured here? The, the older one is injured and, and, and you, um, the, the elf also look injured, actually both of you and the, 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 uh, halfling are you, you look at, you look injured as well. Uh, Molly, you're not injured, right? Molly's mute. Molly's no, mute. I'm not. Not injured. I'm not. So. For each one of you, um, uh, each one of you roll a uh, 1d6 and take that amount of healing. I'll give you each uh, a small yeah. Four. Oh, I feel better. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, <laughs> uh, but each time it disappears, uh, 
The damage disappeared from uh, my... Uh... Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> so, it's not the most... Uh, watch, I mean, go to the other screen and tell you what it is. But I forget why you guys are here. What was it? Hold on one second. I can tell you that. Uh, if I can find the right map. It's on the screen. It's right yeah, every time you change a map, you have yeah. to redo your token. But if you go back to the previous map, it should be there. Yeah, exactly. So Elvin was 21, Herb was 18. Okay. Yeah. Molly Good. was not there, and um, Eleanor was 18? 18. Yeah, and I'm 20 now. <sighs> Just two. Um, so as, as he's healing you, you know, he talks about the, uh, he, you know, talks about the conditions here, and it's difficult, and there's so many refugees, and they come through, and he heals them up as best he can, but he can't. He can't keep them here for very long, and sadly, he has to. He has to send them on their way sooner than mm. than he should, and it's it's horrible because just as they get healed up here, he hears stories, and and some of his patients that he treats, they just they just disappear. They're just gone, um, and people oh. come by. Everyone always comes here looking, you know, for their loved ones because, of course, this is where. They would come if if they were injured and it's so sad i have to tell them that i haven't seen them and they look so desperate sometimes when they're looking for their loved ones thank you good good alf man alf uh, horse um, so you can call me how can i call you sorry uh, so <laughs> so so my name is sochinus dr sochinus dr sochinus yes thank you Yes, thank you, Halfman, uh, Halfhorse. Uh, where do these people disappear? Well, I've been trying to figure that out, um, in honesty. Uh, it, the stories I hear are different from people. You know, I ask them where, where they last saw their loved ones. Sometimes it's just in the street. The, 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 the nymphs in particular tell me stories where they've just been disappearing their loved ones just been disappearing from the streets other ones tell me they you know or they, they have no food to eat and they they're looking for food and supplies and um <coughs> and scavenging in different parts of the, the city sometimes i hear that they have uh they've been up to the fort their loved ones um but they have not come back and but the fort is near fort? the northern gates and the fort uh the fort it's just there on, on up, up on the hill and you can you can see, and now that you're out sort of in the open area, you, you could actually see a, a fort, uh, not a huge mm -hmm. castle or anything, just sort of a fort up on the hill uh, okay. to the northeast. Who, who um, is being, who is there in the fort? Oh, the fort, the fort has been deserted. This town is, is collapsing. It's, 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 it was never really properly um, restored when, when the, the, the trade opened up again um, with Calais, but uh, it's it's all collapsing. The fort is is, is I, uh, from what I hear is in the worst repair of, of just about anything. It's 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 almost fully collapsed. But uh, mm. so, so no one is there as far as I know. And nobody is in charge in this town. Oh, in charge and that would be Solrius. Solrius is uh, is the attaché for the council, and uh, he is in charge. Um, we have asked him for for relief. Uh, but he tells us there's there there are little supplies, nothing more coming from the north now, and there's there's really nothing he can do. He says um, he, he used uh -oh. to come by to the to the hospital and and uh, to see people, but, but not anymore. We we don't see him here really anymore. I take a, a somber look uh, and tell him uh, hmm. well, things are going to get better. We are going to see what we can do. He nods and says, thank you. I, you seem like uh, you're good people. You, you rescued that woman. Um, we, will, we will be able to tend to her. I think her wounds are not so serious. And... Uh, she will be okay. I just worry about her future like everyone else here. Okay. 
And I turned to the others and I said, uh, right, small people? Yeah, hopefully we can fix the situation here. Mm. Sounds like we need to um, we need to wrap this up. Um, but Andrea needs to uh, to take off. Should we should we call it here and pick up another time? Yep, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. I had a great time, you guys. You guys were awesome. I love your characters and the way you all like do things very very differently. And I think it really works. It's really interesting. It's fun to watch. Thank you, Richard. Okay, then mm -hmm. see you Thanks, soon. Richard. Yeah, and bye -bye. Uh, kudos bye. for yeah, bye bye. Take care. And uh, Richard, kudos yeah. for um, doing all this RP back to back and uh, keeping everyone uh, busy. Yeah, I hope that worked out. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I, that's I like, like pretty that. hard to do at the end to like you know yeah. divide your attention between like what everyone's doing. But I think you did a very good job. Thank you for the. I mean, yeah, that's Thank impressive. You Thank you. Yeah, sorry we are kind of splitting sometimes and coming back. Oh, it was fine. I, I really enjoyed that. I and mean, even the stuff in the end, I kind of liked the way that it went around. And, and uh, Elvin went downstairs while everyone else was upstairs. And you guys came back together again and you split up again. I, I thought it was very dynamic. I liked the feel for it. It was actually a lot of fun. Good. Good. Great job. All right. Well, I'll, I'll be in touch with you all um, in the next few days. And, and uh, you know, we can we can trade emails about next time we can get together again in the rush whenever, whenever it works out, whenever it is time for your schedule. In the meantime, we'll, uh, we'll do gills again. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for yeah. playing. Thanks for playing. All right. Thank Have you, guys. See Bye -bye. you around. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye.